Red apples and ripe pears sit alongside banana bread and pineapple juice. Caramel butterscotch sauce and split vanilla pods combine with layered pepper and ginger spicing and a characterful note of charred oak. Really? Hello, whiskey folk. Hello, welcome to another Thursday. Welcome to another VPUB. I hope you're all doing very well. Wonderful to welcome so many of you and waiting. So many of you before the pub doors were even open. It's always great to have that reassurance that people are interested in hanging out for a wee bit of whiskey time on a Thursday night. I've got an interesting one tonight. I'm really excited about this for a couple of reasons. I'm excited to kind of share a new idea, a new format with you, a kind of twist on the blind tasting format in order to examine the concept of tasting notes. But I'm also excited to welcome in three friends that I've reached out to tonight uh, for the tasting panel. They've been picked specifically for this task. These are people that I know well from my local Glasgow Whiskey Club. And they're people that I um, I know have a lot of experience in whiskey and in the industry a wee bit too, but also that they're the type of people that I love to sit next to at the Whiskey Club because you can learn a lot when you sit next to experienced tasters. However, let me start tonight by saying that this is entirely intended to be fun. And the big thing that we're trying to achieve tonight is that we're ch trying to examine tasting notes, the role that they have, and to try and debunk the idea that they're just pretentious nonsense. And, and talk about the value that they actually have in whiskey and that shared whiskey experience. Sometimes whiskey notes, whiskey tasting notes, sorry, can be a wee bit pretentious. Sometimes they can be a wee bit whimsical and silly, but other times they can be really fascinating. And there's nothing better, I think, than being able to sit in company that you're comfortable with to vocalise your experience. And it doesn't matter where you are in your whiskey journey. If you're coming into whiskey as a newbie and you're only smelling alcohol and generic whiskey smells and tastes, that's fine. But as time goes on, you need to be confident to try your best to express and articulate the experience that's in the glass. And that's kind of what nosing and tasting notes are about. Sometimes it can seem a wee bit pretentious, sometimes it can seem a wee bit silly, but the more that you go down your whiskey journey, the more time you spend with whiskey, the more that you realise it's not smoke and mirrors. Everything that you've ever smelled, everything that you've ever tasted in your life can be found in a glass of whiskey. Anyway, whether or not we can prove that tonight or not remains to be seen. The format is untried, so it might be an absolute mess. Uh, before I talk about that any further, I'm going to jump into the chat and uh, welcome in some of you beautiful whiskey folk and dedicated barflies. I hope you're all doing very well. If you're trying to get my attention, you know, just to type at Aquavite or type Aquavite, actually, it's just highlighted orange and I can uh, see that you're trying to get my attention and try and give you a wee shout out. Whiskey Throttle Daniel is in from Canada. You star, Daniel. Wonderful to have you back, my friend. Always a pleasure to have you in here. I know you're missing, you're travelling this year like we all are, buddy. Jimmy Jazz is in. Wonderful to have you, Jimmy, as always. is Desi Vleeland as well. Wonderful, Desi. Good to have you. Shane Lay is in saying, evening, sir. Evening, Shane. Good to have you. Jean de la Cuisine. Uh, Daniel Vermas, you star from Hungary. Wonderful to have you back again, Daniel. Marcus Kreitner is here. Max, you're at a tasting tonight. Are you not at Cadenheads in Vienna doing some kind of uh, tasting? I, I thought I picked something up earlier, but it's nice to have you in the VPUB. Maybe you're watching this on the sly. Always great to have you. Whiskey Weekend Dram is here saying, Aquavite, sipping some Ben Nevis. Good for you. One of my favourites, as you very well know. I hope you're enjoying it, my friend. Helen is here. Good to have you, Helen. How's Andy? Uh, Graham Fraser is here. Mikey, hey, you star. Orange Wheel Rule is in. Steve Anderson, wonderful to have you, Steve. Um, McAllen Fine and Rare, the Dock in Germany, always a pleasure. Uh, Jimmy Legg, Blair Conrad, wonderful Jimmy. Um, apologies for the t-shirt mix-up. I will get you an appropriate t-shirt very soon, Jimmy, and uh, it will be in your size, my friend. Whiskey Untitled is here. Good to have you. Always great to have you in. Man, every time I tune in, Aquavite has a newer 
backdrop. Charles, if that's you, this is just brand new. The reason for the backdrop is because of that wonderful piece of art that was sent to me by Mark Goins over in the States. He had that commissioned and shipped it across. And it didn't fit in the old backdrop, so the, the studio got a bit of a revamp. It's a much nicer place to sit in as well. Charles, if you ever find yourself in the UK and Scotland, make sure you come along and sit here next to me for a wee dram and we can hang out together, buddy. Good to have you. Drew from Arizona is in as well. Good to have you, Drew. Stewie, baby. Cool running. That looks like a new name. Cool running. Uh, good intro, Roy. Slant you, slant you to you. Nice to welcome you in. Pete Head is here as well. Always a pleasure to have you, my friend. Always a pleasure to have you in, Frank. Josh Golliday, finally have a chance to catch an Aquavita live stream for a bit. Sounds like a great topic. Josh, I'm really missing you this year. Um, but I was on earlier talking to uh, the guys over in Texas. The Bastards Ball, the event in Texas this year can't happen. I'm gutted about it. I know that everyone is. Um, it's wonderful to get together with other channels. It's wonderful to get together with Daniel Rex and the team over there at the Tribe. But it's really special to get to hang out with so many members of the community. And that's been stolen from us this year. But we're going to make do. The guys are putting together a fantastic event and they've reached out to, to try and work out something. And I'm not going to spoil anything because it's not fully nailed down yet once it's announced by Daniel and Rex. We can talk about it a bit more openly. Um, but we're going to try and put together something so that the, the YouTube channels that were going to be involved can have a kind of shared virtual space to come together for a bit of a fun event and share it with you on the 12th of September. It's a virtual event. It's going out from 3 p.m. Central Time, which is 9 p.m. UK, 10 p.m. Uh, European Time. Um, and it's going to run throughout the day. They've got a whole agenda of things planned, starting to sound more and more exciting. So uh, save the date. 12th of September for the virtual Bastards Ball. What we lose and not actually physically being there, we gain an inclusion. There's going to be a lot more people that can get involved because obviously the live event, uh, if you're there in real life, it can only hold up to 500 people, but there's no limit in the virtual event. Chris is here. Evening, Roy, you have an email. Thanks, Pete Head. Chris, you are the guy. Your package is here, buddy. It just says, Chris, question mark next to it. If this is ready to go to you, uh, this is your sniper coin that you won. Um, I'll get it shipped out to you tomorrow, my friend. If you've sent me an email with your address, that's perfect. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Pete Head, for looking out for me as well. Rob Halford is in. Wonderful to have you, Rob. Um, thanks for your recent support as well, Rob. Uh, just as the chat jumps. Sorry, Rob, I missed your comment there. Uh, I'll hold it. My uh, Charles is saying that you will actually come and see me hopefully there next year and can't wait to meet you and the others in person. Be a pleasure to welcome you, Charles. Really would. Uh, Luna Aaron saying, hello, Roy, looking good tonight. Luna, thank you very much. Thank you. You can stay a while, of course. Simon Ray is here. Uh, I'm still hopeless with nosing and tasting, so I'm sure this will be informative. It's not a forte of mine. I'm always in company that make me feel like I am not ever going to be good at this sport. Um, and the three people that have invited to join me tonight are uh, an example of that company. Um, I'm going to welcome in uh, my friend Julie, who's the chair of the Glasgow Whiskey Club. She also works for Elixir Distillers. Um, she's worked for SMWS. She's had various uh, whiskey roles in the past, and she's also a co-director of the Glasgow Whiskey Festival. Um, she's a fantastic energy in whiskey and a wonderful person to have driving the Glasgow Whiskey Club forward. Also from the Glasgow Whiskey Club, I've got uh, Stefan Ka, a friend of mine from the Whiskey Club as well. I'm going to ask Stefan to talk to us a wee bit about his whiskey journey. A little bird told me about a very uh, specific accolade that will spring on him when I bring him in. And my friend Ian Petrie as well, who has worked for Scotch Whiskey Auctions, held tastings at One Devonshire Gardens in Glasgow, worked at Ben Nevis, uh, and been involved in various whiskey tastings and events over the years. So I'm going to invite these guys and I would like you all, all the barflies, to give uh, my friends from the Glasgow Whiskey Club a really nice, warm welcome. A welcome in. Julie Hamilton. Hello. Wonderful to see you, Julie. Wonderful to welcome you in. I've also got Stefan and Hello. Ian. I think I've got Ian. Let's try one more time. <laughs> Ian's camera is off and he's disappeared. Oh, no. What happened to Ian? He just dropped out there. We'll try it. We'll get Ian back in a second. I can only speak to one of you at a time anyway, so we'll keep an eye for Ian dropping back in. Julie, Hello. this Hello. is amazing. Thank you so much for joining a VPUB. I've I'm been so threatening to find a good reason to have you on for a long time, and I think this is quite a good wee idea. Um, welcome. It's nice to have you here. 
lovely to be on. Thanks for having us. That was good fun. That was an accurate uh, description. Alexia, currently SMWS in the past, co-director yep. of the Glasgow Whiskey Festival, chair of the Glasgow Whiskey Club. How do you find time to do, you know, I don't know, housework and things? <laughs> you must be pretty busy in whiskey. Whiskey keeps you busy, right? It sure does. Yeah, absolutely. It's um, I've had this amazing opportunity to turn my hobby into my full-time job. So it's uh, what I do most of the time now. So it's, yeah, really good. Excellent. Excellent. And it's great to have your energy because it does need somebody with that tenacity, with that drive, with that passion, honestly, not just for whiskey, but for the people in whiskey as well. Uh, there is Ian waving to us. Okay. Um, even you, Ian, you give me a thumbs up if your tech is working okay at your side. We did a tech check and it was working perfectly. Um, you tell me if you think you're going to be okay. It looks like you might have grabbed a mobile device. Stefan, it's a pleasure to welcome you, my friend. I uh, made a wee confession earlier. I don't think I told you, but there are a few people at the whiskey club that I really, really enjoy sitting next to. I mean, I, I like everybody at the whiskey club, but for a very specific reason, and that is for the way that they talk about whiskey, the way that they interact with whiskey, and the way that they sometimes dissect the whiskey in front of them. I'm, of course, I'm talking about people like Roddy, who's been on the VPUB a few times, one of the most popular people uh, to be asked for. Where is Roddy? Is one of, is, I'm always asked. But one of those people, honestly, is you, Stefan, as well, because um, you have, I think, quite a good natural ability to dissect and describe a dram. Am I flattering you, or would you say that you yes. think... <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised. I'm surprised. I'm positively surprised. And I'm still a bit concerned about the things you want to drop on me, or, or is this the one? Yes. Or is there yes. more to come? I don't know. Well, it's, it's definitely meant to be fun. I think there's no, I don't think anybody can be judged tonight for the way I've put this together because the, we've all we've done is we've taken some tasting notes and we're going to be asked to match the tasting notes to the blind drams. Neither of you, let's see if Ian's okay to come back in. Ian, are you good? I'm all good. Welcome, my friend. Did, did your laptop conk out or something? Yes, the laptop is going to get kicked uh, oh. quite a bit in the next few weeks. Okay, okay, listen, we can see you and I can hear you fine. Yes. If you can if you can find a way uh, any time that you're off screen to prop your device up and there you go, perfect. As long as we can hear you and get the feedback and things and as long as you're safe. Ah, where's the phone not working? <laughs> so much embarrassment on the international stage. It's, uh, you, you, waited, you waited for uh, for us to be live, for this to happen. Rob, Robert Primo has just brought me a dram. Robert, you start stuck at work right now but wanted to offer a hearty thanks for turning us on to Loch Lomond you're very welcome Robert, I hope you're enjoying it I can't believe they charged $35 for the 12 and bonus, it pairs well with the Michael Henry VPUB Robert, thank you so much for your virtual drama friend Slancha to you, welcome don't work too hard Robert Ian, nice to welcome you in nice to welcome you in sorry I'm late Yes, I, I, uh, you're obviously a very active member of the, the Glasgow Whiskey Club now on the committee with the other two guys that are in here. You've worked at Ben Evans in the past, held tastings at One Devonshire, worked at Scotch Whiskey Auctions as well. I know you don't work in whiskey now, um, but you've been into whiskey for a while and it uh, remains, is it your life passion, would you say, one of your life passions? It's not fair to, to put whiskey above my children, so I don't do it in front of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good way to sum it up. Yes, yes. Um, again, yeah. I've got to know you through the whiskey club as well, and it's a you're one of the one of the guys who will stand up like Julie and Stefan occasionally and introduce the whiskies that we're enjoying that night. And I enjoy the colourful way that you put the whiskies across and you give us all uh, some background and history and things like that. I have to say, it's a pleasure to be a member of the club. Julie, the membership list is before people start asking. It is still closed, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, is, we're, 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 restricted, we're restricted by how many drams you can pour out of a bottle, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got. I mean, we do have. We have more than double members than we have spaces at events, but it generally works out all right. So yeah. It's, Not everybody can make it all the time, so you hope over the course of a year that it shakes out okay. Yeah, um, absolutely. But with, there's the there's the regulars. There's the committee. Um, you know, there's that kind of core group and then folk kind of whiskey has to fit around our lives. You know, we don't work our lives around whiskey. It has to fit around our lives. And I think that's kind of the spirit of a lot of folk for the Glasgow Whiskey Club. 
Are you all in a comfortable position, just so that I can explain exactly what we've got in front of us? We've got a tasting mat. We've got four blind drams. All of you have no idea what's in those drams. Um, I have shared a link for anybody that is interested in the chat that's watching tonight in the description box in YouTube under the video. You'll find a Google Documents link. You can click on there and you can see uh, the set that I sent out to the guys. But please be careful what you're saying in the chat. No spoilers in there. And remember um, uh, that uh, it's it's just something for your eyes to, to participate in along. So be careful what you say. But what we're going to do is we're going to ask you, or we've already asked you, to sample these, nose and taste them off air beforehand, and kind of give us your briefest summary of what you think is in the glass. If you want, fully as an option, you can tell us if you've got a standout favourite. You can tell us your favourite to least favourite. You can tell us if you think you know what the profile is, any clue of what it might be, but that's all fully optional. What we want to focus on tonight is matching up tasting notes and testing out that concept of tasting notes and how accurate or helpful they could potentially be. Um, have, have all of you had a wee nose and taste in advance? Yeah. Okay. How many of you feel comfortable? Not even remotely. Yes, of course. That's the idea. It's that idea yeah. of getting your hands tied behind your back a wee bit by blind tasting. But what I want to say to you is the whiskey is on test. And to an extent, the tasting notes and how those have been written is fully on test, not you. We'll get to testing you a wee bit later further down the line, but right now it's fully the whiskey that's on test, okay? So with that said, what I'm going to do just now is I'll, I'll go through the first stage, then I'll let you off higher to, to have a, a little match-up with the first set of tasting notes. We'll open the first envelope, and you can go off screen and try and do the match-up and come back and get us up to speed. Let's start with you, Julie, first. Okay. Is that okay to start with you? Yes, sir. Your own personal notes, we've got a red, a green, a blue, and a yellow running from left to right. Just give us an idea. Have you got a favourite? Is there a standout for you tonight? Um, green, I think, was maybe the one that I liked the best. Good. Um, yeah. Green that stood out as your favourite, if... Yeah. I mean, I think, I think I've not gone for any kind of cheap budget whiskies. I haven't gone for any standout stellar expensive whiskies. I've tried to group these fairly close together tonight, keep the, the, the lineup quite tight so that the tasting notes have, have some work to do, right? Yeah. So you would say green was your favourite. Is there anything that you found off-putting or everything is okay to your palate? Um, yeah, I think red was the one that was, that the palate was just so quite, so far, so quite, it's quite far away. The, the palate was quite far away from the nose, I think. Um, the nose had loads of stuff going on, and then the palate just, it was, it, there was wow. one, it, one thing that I managed to kind of thread it together with. But yeah, it was quite different. Um, Okay, so really interesting on the nose and then the palate died for you. Yeah. Uh, just a quick thank you to Megan. Uh, Megan Miller's bought me a dram. Won't be able to stick around tonight, but we'll catch on the replay. It's sure to be a fun evening. Cheers, Megan. Thank you so much for your virtual dram. And odd Johan Lundberg as well. That looks like a new name, uh, Johan. Thank you very much for your virtual dram. No comment, but cheers, my friend, Slancher. Okay, Julie, go ahead and give us your briefest of notes, and I'll try and um, start off with the red one then. Okay, so um, are we doing nose and palate, I take it? Aye, just a summary, just just a, the briefest, yeah. Thing, yeah. So on the nose, I thought this was all things cola, sweeties, cola cubes and cola bottles. Um, and post-mix, you know the, the squishy gun in a pub, the, the, the syrupy stuff, the cold, like, so non-brand cola post-mix. Okay, um, got you. Varnished wood and cinnamon sugar was what I got on the nose for that one. And Super. then on the palette, well, I'm saying there was only one thread. Flat, non-brand cola was what I got on the palette. Flat um, yeah. Cinnamon balls, white pepper and fresh ginger, and then orange pith bitterness to it. Um, the finish, I felt there wasn't much flavour left in the finish. It was more a mouthfeel, so it was really spiky. And then... It kind of fizzled into being a little bit more like a fizz. And, uh, yeah, nose suggested 
a lot of sweetness in the palette didn't have it it was quite um in the palette i thought okay so what i'm going to do so that you guys aren't leading each other too much um i'm just going to ask if if ian if you agree or disagree strongly or and and the same for stefan ian would you say that that was kind of in the same ballpark as what you had or have, have you got something quite different Similar to, but I found it far more perfumed than actual sweetness. Um, but yeah, definitely the the kind of sweet um, Haribo mix. Um, Haribo. Yeah, like sticking your nose in a bag of Haribo Starburst, uh, Starburst thing. And then Perfect. the palette, I really like it. It's spiky. It's all over the place, but it's not not the longest finish in the world. Okay. Yeah, well, everybody has... The, there's four Glaswegians that are in tonight. Well, sorry, one, one's a kind of uh, an adopted Glaswegian. But certainly all of us have English as a second language, so you're just going to have to bear with us, right? Um, do you have a favourite? Do you have a favourite out of the lineup, Ian? Um, the, I love the nose on one. One was my favourite on the nose, but probably uh, yellow is my favourite uh, overall. Okay, excellent. So again, that's you agreeing with Julie there that one was really uh, intriguing on the nose, and then it kind of it went a wee bit flat, perhaps in the palate. Stefan, mm -hmm. where are where are yes. you? I'm actually quite uh, positively surprised and a bit more relaxed now because what Julie said the, the, really is very similar to what I thought about number one. So there were particularly two things she mentioned, which I thought is just all cinnamon, 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 so cinnamon and cola. So these two relatively odd. I mean, they're not super rare, but relatively odd. Uh, tasting notes or, or uh, smells, I had as well. So I thought this is quite good. But quite, quite I'm familiar. desperately so, looking at my notes to see if I get cinnamon. <laughs> cinnamon was, was just also the what what Ian said about the the Haribo, but basically some artificial sweets, or some some mm -hmm. fake fruit flavor, strawberry, yeah. but but fake strawberry, you know, that fake kind of strawberry. Flavor. So so there's a clear for the red one. We've got a clear confectionery note. Okay, Ian, give us give us a quick overview then of your green, what you thought of the green. Um, I cheat when I do tasting notes because invariably I'll get one big thing and I spend the whole time trying to break it down. So this I one started that. off as dairy milk, fruit and nut, and I couldn't get past that. So then I had oh. to break it down into chocolate and toffee. The nuts then went down from hazelnut, a little bit of almond, then on the palate, it was more a kind of barley sugar, more crystalline sweetness. And um, that's kind of where I've, I've run out because I'm, I'm spending, I'm, I'm finding myself getting stuck on these notes. No, and it, it, happens to me, it happens to me all the time. If there's a very forefront, you know, flavor or a character in the whiskey, it can be tough. That's when you need to do this in company amongst other people to, because they can te help you tease out, uh, you know, different things and take you in a different direction. Uh, anybody agree or disagree with the green? Anything anything stand out about the green from Julie or Stefan? Julie? Uh, I got, on the nose, I got tinned pineapple and syrup. And um, okay. apple sponge cake batter. But I'm with them with the, the kind of crystallised sugar on the palates. Uh, mine was more soaked, soaked dried fruits, mm -hmm. like yellow sultanas. Okay, yellow sultanas. Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm, I might have picked a similar thing myself, Stefan. Yeah, I make more probably make the mistake of always trying to from from nosing and tasting also think about cask types and everything, and then I think of a cask type, and then it suddenly is this what? And I always thought, well, it's probably sherry, but I always have this had this wine impression. So everything was winey and brandy, uh, so that kind of dominated. But uh, uh, the main difference maybe that I thought first knows was a savory broth of some sort. So I thought this broth element. And the most striking uh, thing about the dram, I think, is the finish, where it's where this, suddenly there's this tropical fruit, fruit explosion at some point. So a bit of tropical, and then it, it goes away. But there's a, not enough tropical to make it really, really exciting, but a lot of tropical stuff nonetheless. So I thought this Not was enough great. tropical to make it really exciting, but, but there's, yes, a, there's yes. a tropical... But it's point. probably my, the favorite of, of the four, I would say. So Although not going quite by much. They're all quite good. I was going to ask you that. So your favorite is the green one. So that's the same as Julie then. Yeah. But yeah. maybe the number one, I would say, is maybe, well, that's the least favorite. And that's mm -hmm. quite clear. Mine too. For me. Yeah. Are, are, we, are we unanimous that number four is the least favorite, Ian? 
No, I, I, I like yellow. Oh, no, no, number sorry, one. Sorry, not sorry. number four. No, uh, the, number one. Oh, the red one. The red one. Oh, the red one. I, I really like number one. I, I, and I'm, I'm, it's a bit cheeky. It's a bit dirty. It's a bit kind of, it's not, I'm probably going to find out it's like the most storied of all distilleries and it's, you know, the most reverential of everything. But there's a little bit of, I'm a, I'm a big fan of it, but I think with so many drums, depending on the who you're drinking it along with, as in the other whiskies in the lineup, I think it can flatter it or detract mm -hmm. from it. And I think the company that this whiskey is in tonight maybe is doing that. But it's going to be interesting to reveal what that is. Um, okay, let's let's go through the blue one real quick, and I'll ask Stefan to to intro the blue one for us. What did you get on the blue, Stefan? Um, a lot of. Uh fruit on the nose, but, but pear and apple, pineapple. So pear predominant, predominantly, I would say. And, and then on the palate, it's, it's very malty and creamy, creamy malt, I would call it. So, malty um, and creamy. Okay, good. It didn't really say much else. To be so it's a bit, yeah. So a bit also when I, Yes, with, with most others, I had an idea, oh, this could be that, oh, this could be that. Might all be wrong anyway. It will be. But with this one, it was like, this could be anything. It's okay, so good. good. Yeah. Anybody disagree or agree with the blue one? Uh, Stefan's talking about lots of pear, apple, and pineapple and a malty, creamy note. Not a lot happening on the finish and fairly one-dimensional, maybe maybe a one-trick pony dram. My uh, my single note from this was pear tart tartan uh, with good. a kind of creme anglaise and then breaking that down so again you get this the vanilla in there into. we have a Glaswegian on a live stream quite happily talking about getting pear tart tan is that what you called it there and I, I it's it's having lived in Glasgow for now half my life it's this is the this is the Perth in me uh the growing up area <laughs> so this yeah, is forget. We, we're both from Perth. <laughs> about that so I mean so if we yeah, are okay if we're okay for getting into the Bonacor yeah. And hanging out and talking about you know pineapple cola cubes and flat and any of these things, that's what we want to encourage out of folk to just say what they taste. Don't invent it, don't make it up, but just get as close as you can. And even if you can get in the ballpark, somebody else might come in and say, "Yeah, pastry and pear and syrup and things." Excellent. Yeah, unripe bananas. That was a big thing when I started nosing it, but that's gone away. Okay, I'm I'm going to just pretend I know how to spell that. Excellent. Julie, what, what did you get I, on there? See, I was a bit different. Mine was more citrusy, but creamy citrus, like um, lemon custard Danish I got on the nose, and a, and a new tub of Play-Doh as oh, well. Play-Doh, nice one. Yeah, but now that Stefan said pears, I can't smell lemon anymore. All I can smell is pear. All, all you get is the pear, right? Let's that's, see. You, I'm super suggestible. Like the minute somebody tells me something and I get it, that's it. But um, eight croissant pastry, I got mm. um, on the on the palette and lemon bonbons. You know the kind of powdery lemon bonbons. Okay, good, nice one as well. So we're getting a lot. Of, there's a lot of lemon themes here as well, right? Pear and lemon mm. and things, and maybe baked goods, confectionery still is there as well. Finally, yeah. on the yellow, I'll, I'll go back to Julie. Just tell us how you got on with the yellow one, the last of the lineup. So the yellow one, I. Yeah, it's that kind of epitome of Christmas fragrance, and um, but I think there's there was a layer underneath on the nose of like cinnamon in a polythene bag, but the palette I felt I felt was um, so this is this is going to sound very SMWS, -E, but it was thin muscovado sugar syrup that had been in a hot water bottle. So and again, that's that's a wee bit like the cinnamon, the, the soft bacon spice thing in plastic yeah. and, the, and the hot water bottle holding the, the sugar, right? Yeah. Wow. So what, what, what you're picking up there is some kind of faint notes, fainting notes, dirtier maybe notes maybe. Salty, I, think. I think there's a little so, touch of sulfur. I might be. Sulfur, okay. I Ian, on the, on the yellow... When I first started it, it was it was all um, barbecue sauce, so there was a sweetness, a kind of richness, a funkiness to it, a bit of smoke, and then that went away and it became more baked apples. So I'm going to pull back a season from Julie. I'm not going to say Christmas. I'm going to say autumn. Um, your 
seasons of Merrill, Merrill Fruit Plymouth and all that stuff. Um, I also think this one's cast strength. Cast strength? I think it is. Stefan, can you add or detract from that? Well, maybe I yeah. I thought this was quite pity, but maybe I'm and I was surprised that uh, well, Julie, you, you did mention it really, or Ian mentioned it a bit. I thought it was quite there's, there's in the barbecue sauce. There's, there's this peat. so there's certainly a peat drum of some sort. Maybe not as much as I think it, it would be. And there's also um, on the palate. I think it's it's salty, and there's this toasted nuts. I, I would call it walnuts. walnuts, a very nutty toasted, roasted thing to it, which might also link with the barbecue sauce. I'm not entirely sure. And so in my head, then I went through, still thinking. Well, it should be a properly peated ram. Hopefully it is. And I went through distilleries and I have an idea. It's the only one where I have an idea. But I keep it to myself. I'm 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 Go ahead. Go ahead, Ian. Go ahead. Sorry, my apologies. I've got distilleries down, but I'm not feeling brave enough now having heard everyone else's notes to put well, I'm, going to, I'm going to ask you, and you're not going to be held to this, it's only if you're feeling confident or if you're drawn in a direction with any of them. Just, just it'd be interesting, okay? But I'm excited already because I did this in isolation and I put these in a packages and I sent them out to you. It's currently in a sealed envelope. And okay, I, not everything's going to match up, but there are things that you've said that some certain notes hit it nail on the head. Some of these maybe you, you might consider generic terms, but there's a couple of things that have been said, especially something that Julie just said on that yellow one, that when you read my notes, it's quite uncanny. It's going to be interesting to see. Okay, I'll ask you first then, Ian, if you want to give me a stab on any of these colours, just to what you feel you've turned sideways. There we go, I'm all over the place. Um, I think Red, I'm gonna. You know what? Let's go big or go home. Let's let's put a name to them and we'll see where we go. Because right. they'll either make me look amazing. So I like mean, what, what I'd no like idea. is kind of a feel about age, cast cast strength, age, ABV, and profile region. Maybe distillery if you're feeling cocky. Yeah. Um, number one is cast strength. Um, I think it's a kind of Highlandy one. I'm not going to be more drawn than that. And I think the age is kind of anywhere between 12 and 15 and I think it's Glen Geary because oh. <laughs> that was the very first thing that jumped into my head are there any other in the lineup that you want to try and, and... yellow is I'm torn I'm going to put I'm going to be slightly hedging my bets here yellow is either because these are very similar whisk uh, distilleries by the way um, yep. Yellow is either Ben Romach or Lechek. Excellent, Ian. Thank you. Julie? Uh, red and yellow. Huh? So I'm saying red and yellow are the ones, the only ones that I had any kind of guess Go on. <clears throat> really funny. There's two whiskies that are two, two distilleries that produce whiskies that I don't really get on very well with. One of them is Glengarry and the other one is Ockentoshan. I think okay. Red is Ockentoshan. So you think uh, Red might be an Ockie, okay, good. Yeah. And, and maybe, uh, a Glen, maybe a Glengarry. But Glen is, it, it is a kind of thread of cinnamon that, that I get from, from expressions. Not all of them, like there's sure. been things that are different, but um, standard and would, you, would you agree with Ian that it's cast strength? Um. Yes. No, I wouldn't. Sorry. No, it's under fifty. I think. Okay. So red, you think under fifty? Is there and is anything yeah. else that stood out? The yellow you said stood out a wee bit as well. Yeah, I think I'm, I, I think I agree with Ian about it being a late check. Okay. Thank you. Excellent. Well. And. Stefan, I mean, I'm trying to keep a poker face here, right? I'm trying to <laughs> not react at all. Stefan, <laughs> anything jump yes. tonight? Yeah, I, um, yeah, so, well, yellow, I disagree. And I thought, um, well, it's an Isla, but it's, it's, a, it's one that, that is, I thought, characteristic. It's a, it's a Beaumore. I would even nice. say it's a Beaumore okay. 18, or Beaumore 18, or one of those with, with a bit more of, of, of shit. Sherry, but because of again, can I take my money? Can I give it to this And I, I also thought Lechek for a moment, but it doesn't have this. I think Lechek and Tobamori are, are both 
whether they're peated or not. Very characteristic. There's something about them, I think, that I would have said I recognize, but maybe not. So I would say it's a Bomo number, but that's that's the one where I wrote Bomo. And number one, I have another idea, and I forgot to mention what I thought was also stand out next to the cinnamon of number one is the lactic. It's so lactic. Lactic. So, yeah, and so there's a sour milk thing, which I, you get from all the brulettis, be it Port Charlotte or whatever else they use. So but it you isn't. Think, you think it could be a laddie, no. right? No, but no, I don't think it isn't. I, th I don't think it is. I think it's, and the other one that is lactic, in the recent expressions I tried, and I completely different, not Highland, it's Lowland, it's a Bladnoch. So I think it's a Bladnoch. One of those new Bladnochs, official bottlings, which I've never tried. Okay, this is, this, a bit more risky. this is building to be interesting. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much for, I know that you took a lot of time to go, kind of go through that, spend a bit of time and get through it. It was very brave for you to step up and kind of share these things. Some of the things that you've said is uncanny. It's exciting to have you here. Let's see if Ian's back, is he back settled and things. Stop dropping your phone, excellent. Okay, what we're going to do now is I'm going to get you uh, to open the first envelope. So you're going to get your wee colour dots in there so that you can... Um, keep track of things. And I'm going to go and talk to the, the, the chat. I'm going to talk to the, the, the lounge and hang out with them and I'll let you drop into the background. But I'm going to read through these cards. I'm throwing myself under the wheels first. These are my notes that I took in isolation before I sent the packs out. Toby Field from Whiskey Shared YouTube channel is also in the chat playing along, as well as Frank Roachford. So we've got some control people and some barflies in the chat that are doing this in the background as well. So they know it's all above board. They have the identical set as you guys do. And I'm going to read out my notes. Number one, <laughs> this is the best I could do. Uh, some soft toffee and fudge, vanilla drizzled sponge cake, nuttiness, almond milk, poached syrupy pear and fresh oak. Also got a whiff of rye spice, almost like a rye in there. Anthony Dunn's just bought me a dram, you star. There's one a Johnny Walker Red, I promise. There's no Johnny Walker Red in here, Anthony. But thank you for your dram, my friend. <laughs> On the palette, I said uh, chocolate toffee, eclair, nutmeg and cinnamon. There's that cinnamon. That was a common thread for that one. White pepper, orange syrup and strong vanilla essence. I got a lot of oaky vanilla from this. And the finish was, was sweet, uh, long, sweetly spiced and ridiculously Moorish. Like I said, I have loved this whiskey. I have torn through a bottle and I broke the second bottle to share it with you. I really enjoy it. The second one was the green one. Um, we were There were some similarities there, I would say, with the confectionery thing. Uh, Julie, you were talking about, I think, soaked raisin on that one. Is that right? Uh, oh, no, you were, that was your pineapple and syrup one. So I had mulled, mulled wine spices and cooked red berry reduction. Uh, did I really write this? This doesn't sound like me. Charred marshmallows, uh, prune and prune juice, some green notes, mashed leaves. That was a green note I got in there. Does anybody else get that? A kind of almost like a... I'm struggling to get it tonight. Is this in number two? This is in the green one, yes. Cedarwood, chili chocolate, plums and red damson jam, prunes and syrup, mint leaf. There again on the palette, I'm talking about that green note coming in. A bit of Blackpool Rock. So I think Blackpool Rock is is maybe a kind of peppermint flavour, I don't know. And then finish medium and drying, aniseed and saccharin. So what I've actually done, I've actually, I'm actually telling you what I've, I've ruined it, haven't I? I've, uh, instead of you getting you to match these up, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm telling you what I got on these. I was so excited by the notes. The blue one, this is really interesting. Vanilla cream soda, green malt custard. I think th this is probably the most spirit driven as opposed to cask driven. And I think we were drawn to that. So we got the, the creaminess. We talked about the creamy, the malty. Um, I think you guys talked about some uh, pear, apple, pineapple. Again, on the palate, I talked about malty, creamy, OT cereals light, waxy honey, sweet lemons, and also got some sharp gooseberry. I said the finish was fairly short, but clean, fresh, and moorish. Also got some icing sugar lingering. You're reading these at the same time as me, aren't you? Uh, sandalwood, on this is on the yellow, the final one as well. Now, you've got to be paying attention to here, Julie. Sandalwood pencil case, syrupy peach and vanilla, sour note, wet hessian, pipe tobacco in a plastic pouch. <laughs> now, you specifically said you were getting something. It was cinnamon, I think, or sugar and plastic. Mm -hmm. 
cinnamon in a pl in plastic polythene bag, and that. Yeah. Uh, so th there is something in there that's a bit fainty, a bit like on the dirtier side of the spectrum. I got a bit of linseed oil, and again, linseed oil. I had a discussion about this recently. My reference of linseed oil and what I think linseed oil is, isn't it always the same as what you guys maybe think linseed oil is, right? So it can be tough to do this sometimes. But figs, damp tobacco again, cola. I got cola in the yellow. You guys, or Julie, got cola in the red. Sour orange marmalade, mechanical oils and funk. So I'm getting a kind of mechanical agricultural thing in this. And then I wrote, you may convince me of smoke, but it's well hidden. But on the, fi on the finish, I say, ah, okay, smoke. Takes me to Campbelltown on the finish, salinity and bitter oils. So as I'm reading these out, uh, were there anything, any hooks that you thought, I no, don't get it? I had um, fig on, the, on number four as well. That was... Your silence told chapters <laughs> no, i thought i think the i'm I've, i think all of us or what we just heard the i forgot the colors but the last three i think were quite similar in a way but i've struggled with with one where your your description sounds very different yeah. from, from from mine and from from all of us really that's so similar, number, okay I, I think i think the easy way to the easy way to pin that because I'm talking about a long finish. I'm talking about it being Moorish. What you're seeing is notes written from a fan of this whiskey. Mm. That's what you're seeing. So one corresponds with red, yeah? Your notes. So it goes one, three, two, four. That's your digits. Exactly. Exactly. Right. So, yeah. so um, I, what you're seeing there is I have written that those notes, I think, as a fan. And you've sat with that blind... Yeah. And you've you've been completely critical of it, completely unbiased. You've no idea what it is, and you've gone in and you you've picked out that. So so there's nothing like I say. It's the whiskey that's on test, and yes, the note takers, and it's that's my test done. So I think what we'll do now is uh, we'll ask you to. Um, that's me, kind of. That's my notes out there that they've been done. Um, I should have let you just try to match those up. I'm sorry I got my head on myself. I was so excited, I think, about the plastic pouch thing and stuff. <laughs> so what we'll do is if you guys open um, envelope two, envelope two contains the notes from independent reviewers, people that do this perhaps not for a living, but let's say a hobby or let's say they do it regularly. So there's going to be uh, notes in here from uh, Malt Review. One of the notes is from Malt Review. One of them is from Whiskey Base. One of them is from Serge from Whiskey Fund. And one is from um, one of the barflies, actually, Philip Story. He's a, He's got his own blog and review site. And I, I nicked one of his uh, tasting notes as well. So I'm going to drop you guys into the background. And you can relax with these independent reviewers' notes and try your, your best to do a wee match-up game. Okay? And I'll draw you back in in five, six, seven, so however many minutes, and, uh, and I'll hang out with the barflies in the meantime. Does that sound okay to you? Absolutely. Good luck, everyone. Thanks for that fascinating stuff, Stefan. Thanks, Julie. So there you go. Not a lot of excitement for my notes, but I think my notes were pretty good. What will be interesting for me, actually, is to sit tomorrow with the exact same notes again and spend a bit of time. Um, and, of course, you could argue that I'm going from memory a wee bit, but just spend a bit of time and try and go through with notes days apart and see if I can pick up anything that's similar because the person is the same, the whiskey's the same. The only thing that's different is that moment in time. And I think you'll find, like anything, it's completely inconsistent and all over the place. But that's not the point of this. It's not to prove that I'm a fantastic uh, assessor of whiskey. I'm, I'm on record regularly saying I'm terrible at it and I try really, really hard. I practice a lot. I want to get better. But I think this is fascinating. Those guys are, are currently opening uh, envelope two. So I'm going to read out the producer's notes after I've hung out with you guys for a little while. Neil Cochran is in. Wonderful to see you back, my friend. Great to have you, Neil, saying this is a great game, Roy. Mark Slinger is saying this is a great idea, Roy. I'm not sure how it is for viewing, um, I, but it's kind of, a, <laughs> I think it would be fabulous to sit and do this in a group, have somebody set this up and structure this so that people could do this as a kind of group together and have a bit of um, 
a bit of debate going on and a bit of discussion and things as well. It could be a really good live event. But in these days, we have to make do. And I thought it would be a, a nice way to kind of discuss the topic rather than just talk about my opinion of tasting notes, what they should be, what they should do, what they should achieve. Um, try and just encourage everybody to kind of get their feet a wee bit wet with tasting notes. Whiskey Games, Matt Bishop was saying there are two, three common words amongst all the tasting notes. Um, I, I think you're probably right there. Cinnamon was certainly one of them I spotted. Um, uh, the apples, pears, notes, vanilla, these are always uh, common words. So I wonder what your two to three words are, Matt. Stick them in. Luna Aaron is saying for viewing, it was a bit chaotic, honestly. I well, Luna, we do our very, very best. We try these things. We can refine it over time. Uh, interesting to hear all the different notes for the same drams, as Helen is saying. Marcus Kreitner is saying, if I would tell someone that I watch people exchange taste notes, they would call me weird, but it's brilliant. I love it. Thanks, Max. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Jimmy Legs bought me a dram saying, okay, I have the Talisker 10, Roy. It's better than I remember you win on that one. Talisker 10 never is one for me that I really love. I know that so many people out there love it. So many people, it's their gateway whiskey. It's what, it's what made them really enjoy single malt. Um, and I love some Taliskers. That eight-year-old that's over my shoulder here is one of my all-time just amazing whiskies. I absolutely adore it. There are Taliskers that I love, but the 10 isn't a standout for me. I just think it's one of these solid malts that seems, it doesn't stop me recommending it to other people because I know how so many people do love it. Falscraft is saying it's good to know what kind of notes a person takes. When I know them, I can follow and have an idea. We talk about leading each other. We talk about influencing each other. We talk about that's okay. There are certain applications and situations that it's not okay to influence each other, especially when you're trying to, if you're on test as a reviewer, for example, and you're trying to decipher or work out what a blind sample is or something. But when you're in company, part of the pleasure of enjoying whiskey is how the, the communication with that whiskey and then how you communicate, how you articulate that experience with the people that you're with. And I think that when there's an exchange going on, it's not only is it good to influence and lead each other, it should be actively encouraged, depending on the environment. Orange Wheel is saying, very good fun, nice format. My old notes on yellow and red share many similarities with your guests. I need to look out for Toby and I need to look out for Frank Roachford because those guys are doing it in the chat as well. If you guys have a, 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 a uh, and the ability to just quickly summarize whatever you're you're finding or you're doing. It would be nice to to read it out. Kanur Connoisseur is in saying, Hi Roy, I couldn't make it earlier today. Hi everyone, hope you're having a great evening. Listen, Kanur, never worry. It's just that these things fit around you. You can pick these up on the replay. You don't ever need to worry about being late or early uh, or even picking it up uh, in chunks a bit later, podcast style. Nick Keen in New Zealand is saying, I'm hosting a tasting tomorrow, and this VPUB has got me putting together a match the producer's notes to the dram game. I'm sure it'll be fun. Yes, I think that's going to be the funnest thing for me when actually it's not kind of me sitting at home doing my tasting notes. It's not these independent reviewers, but it's the actual producers. Let me read out quickly. Uh, my Whiskey Games is saying one strong character for the blue dram is muesli, bread, malt, and oats. Yes. Um, let me have a look. I said myself for the blue one, I said something along those lines. Malty, creamy, and oaty cereals. Yes. He's saying it's one of his favourite distilleries, and that note is something that he looks for. So obviously some of you guys have been, are, thank you for being cool and not mentioning what the distilleries are in the chat. You guys know what these things are. You know what the drams are that we're sipping. And if you're interested in that, the link is in the description box in YouTube under the video. You can go in and have a wee look. Let me read out these independent notes. Okay. One of them says, on the nose, intensely oily sunflower oil and olive oil and full of dried apricots, a pleasing harmony of the savoury and sweet, warm golden syrup sponge cake with a streak of raspberry jam, hints of ginger, but then the savoury returns, bay leaves, thyme, earthy, before the sweeter notes of fudge shop and orange marmalade. Orange marmalade. Another one of these notes says, the nose has toffee, caramel, tobacco notes. The mouthfeel is thin with no cling. The body has raspberries, barley sugar, water, 
a very unexpe unexpected top note, and then moves forward. Sultanas, apricots, there's cinnamon and other wood spices in the background, along with faint toffee. The finish has cinnamon and toffee with sultanas. There's that cinnamon coming up again. That's Philip's story on, uh, a, on his own blog. The first one I read out was from Malt Review. Um, another one I've got here saying typical distillate driven, this time with bags of tangerines and a, and a saucer full of muesli rather than classic chalk lemon. It's rather delicate, in fact, well carved, precise and just lovable, in fact, with water, fresh oriental bread, a little aniseed and orange blossom water and honeysuckle in the background. I love these notes. Sweet Vishnu, whatever Vishnu may be, a blend of fresh mirabelle and pear juices at first, then more on some IPA with a citrusy hoppiness, impeccable, unflavoured young barley eau de vie from some good stills. With water absolutely pristine, excellently fruity with a very fresh and not too yeasty breadiness, notes of flour syrup too, uh, moulin he's saying, whatever that is. Medium, very clean, with more honeyness on the finish. And that was from Serge at Whiskey Fun. My Probably my favourite notes to read, honestly. Um, another one, the final one of the four from the, the independent notes is pretty spicy on the nose. This smoke is more uh, likely to be smoky barbecue sauce, tobacco and burning herbs, maybe a bit of frankincense, then some vanilla. Now comes the sherry, some red currant. At the same time, also citrus fruit and a cooling note, maybe mint, additional wood notes. After the first sip, the seasoning softens and it becomes more fruity, only pretty creamy and sweet. Fudge, sugar beet, dried apricot, but then comes the oak and it gets tart and tingling. Pepper, herbs, leather, chocolate, burnt bread, crust, carried the smoke, which now comes in a little more subliminal and less spicy and a drying finish with tobacco, cocoa and honey oak. That was from Whiskey Base. Um, I'm not sure who the user was, but when the whiskey's revealed, you'll be able to, to track that down. I thought that was really quite good notes um, from, from a user on Whiskey Base. Ken Hollis saying, bought me a drum saying, I'm loving trying to work these whiskeys out. Possibly a Glen Farkless 21 in there somewhere. Back to the Brook Landy 8 whilst I wait to find out. Hope you're enjoying that Brook Landy 8 in your glass, Ken. It was very nice of, to welcome you in, my friend, and thank you for the virtual dram. Cheers. Gregor is saying, Aqua Vitae, never thought I'd hear a Ouija talking about tart tartan and creme, on, creme anglaise with a perfect enunciation to boot. City of culture indeed. And that's Gregor from Edinburgh. Well, expat, he's currently in Oregon in the States, but um, aye, we, we have a wee bit of banter about the East and West. If it's good enough for the Ouija's, it's good enough for anyone, Gregor. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Graham Fraser is saying, is one a space side? <laughs> Wink. Frank Rochard is saying, I'm going from red to yellow. Ooh, he's putting in his code. Excellent. So, Frank. Has given me his code. One, three, four, two. And I'll be asking uh, the guys when I bring them back in for their code as well. Let's see if we've got Toby Field anywhere. There he is. Toby, if you've got a, a, a number code that you can give me, just type it in. Yeah. Whatever, however you've matched it up, you'll find that there are numbers here uh, that you can just give me four digit codes. That's the easiest way for me to match it up on this wee tracking sheet that I've got. Julie, Stefan and Ian, give me a thumbs up if you're ready to come back in or if you need a bit more time. Everybody, good. So that must have been maybe a wee bit easier than my notes. Were the independent reviewers quite a bit better than mine? Now, obviously, I, I that was that didn't help you anymore, Ian. No, no, I was going to, I was going to say that the what I did the, the reason I was quiet when you asked about your notes was that I was struggling to find anything that I disagreed with. The only one I've gone back over it was you've got the 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 mint note in number three, and I kept going back to it and can't find that. So the only reason I was quiet earlier on wasn't any kind of, it was literally, I agreed with everything. It was a variation on a theme. And then I found the same in uh, in the independent reviewer notes. So, well, well <laughs> yeah, the, the kind of minty thing um, it is, was actually on uh, 
as you go left to right on your mat was on the green one for mm. me. Okay, fine. Um, yeah. And I kind of that that kind of I think Blackpool I think Blackpool Rock is mint flavored as well. Not sure, um, and I'm not 100 percent sure it's there tonight. But when I spent a bit of quiet time with it, I got a kind of green. Sometimes you get a kind of herbal thing like mashed leaves, I've said there. Sometimes it comes off like tomato stalks. Uh, you know, that kind of green note. It just makes me think of green, um, that kind of thing. Anyway, let's see how we got on. Julie, just before we get into any discussion, have you got number? Mm -hmm. Just give me four numbers and I'll see how we got on here. Okay, my, my sequence is one, four, three, two. Superb. Stefan. Uh, same one four three two. Excellent. And Ian, I'm going four one three two. Four one three two. So it means it's when I when we do it like that, it's very easy for me to mark. But let's have some comments out of you. Let's start with you, Ian. Um, what drew what drew you to thinking uh, the one that we've been talking about a wee bit, uh, the red one. Um, you seem to think that that uh, on the produce, sorry, on the independent reviewers' notes is it's the orange. The reference is repeatedly to orange marmalade and orange again. That was the the first note that I got um, before we ended up going down the Haribo Star Bag, Starburst, whatever that range of chewy sweets is called. Yeah, I just had oranges and variations on oranges. Um, so that's why I stuck with that one. Number the independent note number two for had literally the guy has smoky barbecue sauce at the start, so I slapped that one over it at number yellow. That was number two. And if it was Serge's one for for three about the eau de vie, the pristineness, the the kind of spiciness definitely on the the, the blue, which left me um, the. Philip Story's ones for the green, um, but I, I could, I could see where you could chop be between four and one, but um, yeah, I was just going with my own note of oranges and and being honest that I thought it was a symphony of oranges. Superb, absolutely superb. Can I tell you all that you can all be quite confident in what you've put together there and what you've fed back? It's it's, it's really quite cool to see. Stefan, would you, uh, any comments that you can add or? Mm, not really, but I agree that, well, I disagreed with Ian, but I agree that one and four were the only ones where I would potentially swap. And I didn't get the, the orange, so therefore I chose differently. But the cinnamon was mentioned, and the cinnamon was the one that dominated number one, so for it had to be yeah. that. So, and, and the second one, so the, sorry, the green one, has all in the description has all these sherry cask things that over Glen Farkless, Glen Dronach, and so on, which it might well be or something like that. And that's why I went yeah, this way. And three and f uh, sorry, and then the last one, blue and yellow, I think are pretty well, should be pretty obvious, but might well not be. Blue and yellow should be pretty obvious. So if any of you got blue and yellow or didn't get blue and yellow, then shame on you. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, 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 no. This is all personal. <laughs> Julie. Yeah, are you feeling confident about your lineup? Uh, I think so, and I've changed my mind already about what I think yellow is because now I'm reading somebody else's tasting notes and I'm going back to it. I recognise it. Don't second guess. No, I know. I think, I think yes, it's um, one of those things that we that we get drawn into doing, and I think it's fine to do it when we're sitting in company and things like that. Yeah. But I think when you're left alone to kind of just dial in and focus, and you say "I, I," and you you kind of dial it in. That yeah. suddenly you're you you get hit with lights of panic when you hear other folks saying it, or you read other people's notes or whatever. You think, oh, and I missed that and things. See, um, I think now that I'm looking at now that I'm tasting it again, I'm thinking it was so obvious. I can't believe I missed it. But anyway, we'll wait. Okay, I, I think uh, I'm actually I'm actually quite I'm quietly impressed. I think you um, you might be surprised how well you did. Let's open that envelope. Let's all open it together. This is the last one, and what we're actually going to be looking at here um, 
uh, we've been on for an hour already, is we're looking at the actual producer's notes. Now, if it's an independent bottler, it's from the independent bottler. If it's an official bottler, it's from the distiller. But this is the notes that would come in the packaging, perhaps. It would come in the website that they support it. But these notes are actually from the producer. And I'll read them out along with you. Uh, I'll start with the shortest one first. Uh, intense and richly complex with sherry kicks, stewed fruits, beeswax polish, vanilla pods, and delicate smoke. So I think a couple of things in there that would have you drawn towards a certain direction, I think. Uh, there's another one here, the one that's got the, the, the let's see, the second, um, it's this another short one, not as no, short as the one I've just read out. It starts off with soft hints of cinnamon sticks, there's cinnamon in the producer's notes, salted caramel, and dehydrated strawberries, honeycomb, cashew nuts, and nougat cookies, and homemade tablet, apple strudel, and lemon meringue pie. Wow. And then the second but longest one, uh, orchard fruits and spit-roasted pineapple chunks. There's that pineapple coming in. Uh, sweetened with honey nougat and cookie dough, oak smoke, Wood char float across the nose, cinnamon and pepper spices offering enlivening intensity, red apples on the palate, ripe pears alongside banana bread, pineapple juice, caramel, butterscotch sauce. You may remember this is one I wrote read out at the start, I think. Vanilla pods combined with layered pepper and ginger sp spicing and a characterful note of charred oak. Wow. Finish is enduring wood smoke. Supports beautifully fading fruits and perfectly balanced oaky dryness. And that, that leaves us with the last one, which is the nose of oaks, black magic, chocolate caramels, toffee apples, cinder toffee and dried flowers. My goodness, we're all over the place. Nobody's got any floral notes all night at all, right? With hints of coconut and tobacco coming later. The palate has amazing chewy viscosity. Uh, I, nobody's really mentioned texture much tonight. It would be good to get feedback on texture. Uh, peanut, uh, sorry, sugars and nut brittle, barley sugar, nut brittle, black forest gato, raspberry jam tarts, golden sultanas. You said yellow sultanas, Julie, didn't you, in one of them, with a little spice engine throbbing away in the mouth afterwards. Water brings down sugar to porridge, vanilla, apricot, danish in the nose. The black magic chocolates are now in a perfumed leather handbag. Taste buds are tempted, tantalized, and titillated by dark chocolate gingers, silky chocolate mousse, and tingly echoes of bourbon wood spice. I can see immediately who the most lyrical has been, right? The producers. You see extremes there. There's, there's two there that are really go for it, and there's two that are really quite brief. <laughs> um, so that I don't know if that helps you in any way. I don't want to lead you. But um, it's quite a difference there. And you can see that uh, there's a couple of similar themes there, I think. Um, but I would have to say that there's, that introduces some new things. Was there any textural thing, Stefan? Did you pick out anything that was particularly viscous or chewy or anything that was thin? Um, I thought that number one was maybe a bit thin, if I recall. Or maybe, no, not thin, but maybe it found it a bit alcoholic, a bit spicy, a bit too spirity. So maybe that's yep. thin. Uh, and number three, sorry, the blue one, this was the red one. Then the blue one, I thought, had quite nice viscosity. So this was maybe the most oily one, if I'm not mistaken. But again, so the blue one was a textured dram. Yeah. As well as it being spirit driven, quite a nice oiliness to it, you mentioned. So maybe not. Yeah. Um, I've only got a wee tiny drop of this left. I'm going to miss it when it's gone. I really quite like it. Julie, is there anything that's jumping out at you there? Or are you thinking, no, I'm... I mean, obviously, I'm going to give you a few more minutes. I'm going to let you go I on. And... Just, just for you reading them out. But um, the green one, I found quite a kind of syrupy, viscous mouthfeel. Um, and four was really mouth-filling as well. Good. Yeah. Good. And the red one, I, I just, I found that, I did find that quite thin. I found it quite um, spirity, yeah. Well, <clears throat> if I take you back to one of the independent notes, uh, I'll mention here, in the mouth, texture, exclamation mark. 
this is so important. None of that watery, hastily made spirit. This is tongue suffocatingly thick. Yeah. So one person's uh, interpretation is not guaranteed to be somebody else's. I have to say, I am so biased about this whiskey that I don't taste thin. I taste the, I, I, I taste it's sitting on my palate and I'm enjoying it. <laughs> but but I, I beg to I beg to differ. I mean I think that um sorry, I beg to differ. I, I, I hesitate to differ with Stefan and Julie. Um, because what you taste is what you taste, and that's the most important thing. And even if somebody stands up and says, No, I don't get that, that does not mean that you are wrong. Of this course. is the most important thing. And the more confident that people are just to say the better the experience should become and the more that you'll be encouraged to practice and get better at it and get more and more out of enjoying the whiskey. Can I leave you guys to go off and do a wee matchup? I know that you're all already doing that and I'll bring you back in only two minutes. It'll be very fast this time. And then the exciting time comes and you, you get to show off and nail it in the semi-blind. So I'll speak to you all in two minutes. Thank you. Yeah. Ah, excellent stuff. There's a couple of people, and a lot of you all know in the chat that's downloaded the wee kind of sheets that I've printed off. There's a couple of people have said things, uh, and I don't want to, they can hear what I'm saying, of course, uh, that I've nailed it. And then they've nailed a couple of them, I've nailed a couple of things, uh, and it's been really interesting to see. Bear in mind that they don't have any idea what they are sipping. Alistair McPhail is here. Good to see you, Alistair. Good to have you in. If you can taste everything in your life in whiskey, have you ever had one that gives you Lauren sausage? Not yet. That doesn't uh, hit me. It's not a memory. But if there is something about sausage, uh, Lauren sausage, that makes it a different kind of sausage, um, I, I think that one day there is a whiskey out there that's going to give you that. There's lots of savoury uh, whiskies out there. There's lots of kind of... Uh, it's whiskies that can give you meaty notes and things. Sausage is a note I have heard talked about in whiskey. There's a bunch of different sausages, of course. I've not had a Lorne sausage whiskey yet, Alistair. If I find one, you'll be the guy I seek out. Neil Cochran is saying, a bit confusing jumping between numbers and colours. I, I know you'll see why I've had to try and track it. Um, I had to try and... Uh, what I had to do was not give away what it was, but make sure that there was some kind of way for us to be talking about the same thing. Um, and numbering it from one to four would have just been as confusing, especially when we've got notes that have to be numbered one to four as well. So I, sorry if it's confusing, all will be revealed. Um, there will be ways to refine this, Neil, in the future. I knew it was going to be complex. I knew it was going to be one of those things that you would would work much better in a live environment, but we still have to give these things a go, don't we? Jimmy Legacy, and if it's meaty, then it's Mortlach. I see where you're coming from, Jimmy. Um, but you'd be surprised how many meaty, savoury drams are out there. More, more than Mortlach. Graham Fraser is saying, I'm transferring my wine tasting skills to whiskey, which I find helpful. So many people in whiskey are from a wine background. So, so many. And I think it is helpful. I think lots of people that are coming in from wine have a slight advantage. They certainly have that comfort and that confidence about it. Whiskey Games Matt is saying, your attachment to the red dram is really interesting, especially as how the others find it. Yes. That is fascinating to me. Craig Dollar is here tuning in from Spain. You're live in the big telly. <laughs> At 62, Lubina, enjoying your blind tasting chatter. Cheers, fella, with Moira Morrison. Moira, good to see you both tuning in. I hope uh, you're having a bit of fun out there and getting a bit of sun. Frank Rochford is oh, he's saying, I really struggled on that one. I will say from red to yellow. Let's take Frank's numbers. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Frank. Thank you very much. Toby, I didn't get any numbers from you yet. If you want to share them with me, my friend, um, that would be cool. And Toby is saying he hasn't had lawn sausage for a while. I don't know if you get lawn sausage in the in the south, do you? Do you, Toby, down in the southeast? Cresimir is on. The Sniper King is here saying Craigellachie is meaty to me. 
I, yeah, it's got lots of body here. It can be sulfury at times as well. Um, aye, that's interesting. Whiskey Bond Mark is saying Edradour is savoury, especially the Signatory 10. Um, whenever I, I notice a meaty note, says Che Francis, it's usually a smoked meat. Yes. I remember being at a tasting club one night and it was Scott. Um, I was sitting next to Scott and Scott said on the Glen Scotia 15, we were all getting a savoury note. We'd, and and uh, uh, Scott said, uh, Scott McMillan said, smoked salmon, I'm getting smoked salmon. And I couldn't smell anything but smoked salmon on the savoury side of that Glen Scotia 15. Stuck with me ever since. Um, I'm not saying it's always going to be there in Glen Scotia 15 all the time, but last year uh, or the year before when, it, when we were at the, the Glasgow Whiskey Club, I get uh, smoked salmon thanks to Scott McMillan. Ebhead Rolf is in. It's lovely to just be here in a pub with a nice glass in a hand and listen to random notes. That's pretty much what it is tonight, Rolf. Thank you, my friend. Um, Whiskey Shared Toby saying, I, I like red and I think it may be North American. So Toby thinks not Scotch. He's thinking North American for number one. Sorry for, for the red one. So number one on the left of the mat. And Lindsay is saying, did a survey today that asked me to pick my favourite beverage, had to choose between red wine and whiskey. Like asking who my favourite child is. I know. I know. When people even ask you what your favourite wine is or your favourite whiskey is, um, Lindsay, I can imagine that might be difficult too. Okay, give me a thumbs up, guys, if you're in good shape. You're feeling confident now, aren't you? Ian, Stefan and Julie. Okay. You've matched them up, haven't you? So you're ready to give me your numbers. Ian, go ahead. One, three, two, four. Ah. Ah. One, three, two, four. Okay. And uh, Stefan? <clears throat> I, well, uh, well, first I need to say what is the most surprising here is that while our nodes, Roy's nodes, the independent nodes, they were not necessarily easy, but you could see there's a thread going through. This one was much more difficult. And these are the official ones. You know, these are the, the stuff on the box. And I, so I would now, I, to, well, that's maybe something for later, but I just thought this, this was the most tricky round. So I have Excellent. one, four, two, three. <clears throat> Excellent. And Julie? One, two, four, three. Excellent stuff. Excellent stuff. Stefan, you've literally taken the words out of my mouth. I felt that um sorry. I felt that where where my notes were a bit more kind of almost kind of brutal and basic and kind of direct and um and then the independent notes started to get a bit more flowery in the writing. When we got to the producer's notes, the the you know the the raps were taken off and it just got really quite whimsical. There was a couple in there that were quite brief and to the point, and I think that's probably going to help you a little bit. Um, that's kind of what my feeling was. Let's see if that, that works out. Um, I'm just going to mark off the scores here to see how we're doing. I've just looked down at number three, and I cannot, be I cannot believe what I put that as the green. Oh, I'm embarrassed, actually. Well, I've just written down on the, that one what I think it is because I think I've just twigged to what it is, and I'm actually howling at myself for not getting it. What? What? So what? What? Sorry. What? What one are you talking about first? Producer note number three. Right. I put that down as green. And uh, you have. Yes, and I was wrong because it's yellow. Well, we don't know yet. Do you, do you want to change it? I would love to change it. Uh -huh. yeah, it's, it's absolutely fine. You're a sweet, lovely man. And three. There's, there's not been a reveal yet. So so you're now saying, Ian, uh, if I'm right, one, four, two, three? I th one, four, two, three. And I think I know what three is. Go ahead. I'm go oh, I'm going to oh, How about the hell? I'm, um, I think it's Springbank 15. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. I think it's the yeah, it's got a funky note in it. That's in my notes. I said it's taken me to Campbelltown. Remember, bear in mind when I wrote my notes, I knew what I was drinking. 
it's an odd thing to write. It's taken me to Campbell Town, but I, I'm just going to leave that floating there. Now we do the kind of semi-blind reveal. This is the exciting thing. You're on screen. I'm going to be looking at your expressions. Open that envelope, and you will now. You don't know which is which, but you know what you're sipping. Please there be an Alexa drama among this. <laughs> Roy. Yeah. Can I cheat and go back to my original idea? <laughs> like, when I totally said it was Ben Romick right at the start. You heard me say, you heard me say to Julie, don't second guess yourself. <laughs> go with your initial fresh instinct. Oh, I'm gutted. Oh, I'm gutted. <clears throat> I can't believe how much I got excited about that. Well, we still don't know which one's which. You so, still don't know which one's which. No, I think I, I do. May, I may have picked these drums specifically to. No. 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 A here. Okay. No. So that tells me. That tells me. Now, do, do you need to go back into the background, or can I keep you on screen to to go through this? No. You're happy, aren't you, Stefan? You're not. You're not so confident. You're kind of confident. No, no, I'm confident, yeah. Well, no, no reason to be confident, but I am. Okay, after three. Okay, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, after three, I'm just going to say, uh, I should tell everyone in the chat because not everybody has downloaded the sheet, right? So I'm going to tell everyone what, we've, what we have, and I won't tell the colors. We have, in varying order, Ben Romack. This is the 100 proof Ben Romack, 57 ABV, so it's 100 British proof. This is a 10-year-old uh, cast strength Ben Romack. Fantastic jam. I'm nearly finished this. It's gone through a rebrand, re and it has been discontinued now. It was very popular when it was around. We also ha have a Cadenheads Deanston. Um, this is a 10-year-old Deanston from Cadenheads. Um, as you can see, I've been enjoying this one too. It's almost on its way out. We don't have an Elixir, Julie, but we do have an SMWS from a couple of years ago. This is an eight-year-old SMWS from Blair Athol, which is, I thought was an interesting one. There's Blair Athol coming onto the independent market now. Back when I bought this, there wasn't a lot of Blair Athol out there that you could get your hands on. We also have a non-Scotch in the lineup here. We have from Bimber, London's Bimber Distillery. We have their Richard Oak Expression um, at 51.9%. ABV on all of these is fairly high, 51.9% on the Bimber. Uh, on this um, Blair Athol, uh, Black Magic in the Black Forest, is called 59, it's 59.1%, quite high. On the Deanston, it's high as well, 566 .6. And as we know, on the Ben Romack, 57 so in unison, I want you all to shout after a countdown, okay, what you think red is. Three, two, one. Bimba. Bimba. Okay. <laughs> Green, three, two, one. Blair Athol. Blair Athol. Mm. And three, two, one, blue. Blair Athol. Uh, sorry, I missed that. Yeah, Dinston. Oh, you thought blue was Blair Athol, Julie? I did. Good. So you think... So what did you think green was then? Um, I thought... No, I thought green was Dinston. Sorry, I said okay. Ben Roman. So you've swapped those two around. So that, that, that means... Um, sorry, Stefan, what did you say for blue? Uh, uh, Dean, uh, Deanston and Ian, yeah, yeah Deanston is blue, and that means by process of elimination that you all think that the Ben Romack is the yellow one. Yep, <laughs> we're all wrong now. You've got a final envelope that you can open up to reveal, and I can tally up your scores quite easily. I wonder how Toby and Frank in the chat got on with this. There, there, there is there is a clear winner amongst you tonight. I think it's deserved. I'm not going to mention this. the scores are very high, honestly speaking. Um, there's not much in it between all of you. Um, I'll say that the winner, um, out of a possible four, eight, twelve, eight, 
Yeah, only got three wrong all night. Only got three. Only made three mistakes all night. Ian Petrie. And and your opening gambit for that yellow was Ben Romack as well. It was, it was the whiskey I was thinking of. And then, like you said, it's been discontinued in the rebrand and everything. I went, and then I started to, you get caught in those cycles of where you go and everything. And I, yeah. But it's a beautiful whiskey. I should have just stuck with it. And, and the, the, the other, both of you, Julie and Stefan, um, weren't far behind, honestly speaking. You can watch this back on the replay and keep your own scores. You'll know what your scores are. Um, but it's, but it's, uh, uh, it's quite amazing. I listen. I can see you saw my note saying how the Ben Romack was taking me to to Campbelltown. So that's what brought you. You were thinking it could be a Springbank as well. But it's funny because your initial instinct was that that indeed was Ben Romack way back at the start. Uh, Stefan, so many of your notes tonight were very, very on point, very succinct. Very curious to hear your um, your assessment of. That, that bimber blind. But that bimber is a three year old whiskey. Yep. It's three years old. And I remember, well, we had uh, yesterday when we had a quick chat about what, about uh, how to set up the, the microphone and everything. And you briefly you said all the whiskeys I, I chose, nothing is very young, nothing is very old. And I remember then yeah. thinking that the first one would be one of those new distilleries put into a crazy cask because it's very casky. Uh, and, and then I thought, now maybe not. Maybe it's something a bit more. You know, more classic, like an established. You're, theory you're absolutely right. I said that, and as I was kind of just, is. just waxing lyrical, I said, "Oh, there's nothing." Yes, and I don't need to believe you. <laughs> what I meant was, there's nothing particularly expensive and nothing particularly cheap. But I did say old and young, and you might have saw me immediately going ah. But then I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't correct myself because yeah. Uh, so yes, um, but that's what's but, I, but I, you go ahead. Yeah, sorry. No, just because of the Ben Roma. This is. I remember once in the club we had a Ben Roma, which I introduced, and at the time saying that this is the Spring Bank of Speyside, which I thought. And now this, then uh, Ian smiling. Yeah, in a way, it's 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 true. You know, you have the big independent bottler behind, and yes. who run this this distillery, which is small and know what they're doing, and and has a bit they're of a little bit of very paint, traditional methods, etc. Yeah. So, I think the reason I, the reason I picked. That version of Ben Romac is that the other Ben Romacs frustratingly come out at forty three percent, and can sometimes leave you a little wanting. But the 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 higher ABV one, the cast strength versions, the fifty seven uh, uh, or the hundred proof one, as it was known, the ten year old, that brought everything that you needed to display the, the distillery. I think it, 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 at its best, and certainly how Gordon and McPhail perceive the distillery. I also think that the funk and the savoury notes, the orange marmalade, is in there for me. You know, if I think if I was sniffing and tasting a Ben Romac, I would be drawn to saying it was Campbelltown oftentimes. But if I know it's not a Springbank or something, I think it'd be quite easy to kind of suggest it might be a Ben Romac. I think it's quite a distinctive profile, quite a distinctive distillery character. Um, there's a couple of you thinking that it could be. Uh, uh, I think Ian and Julie both kind of felt it could be Lechik. I could see that, you know, the peated version. I can also see why Stefan was thinking the lighter peat, maybe it could take him. And the kind of sherry sulfury notes, maybe take him to a Beaumont or something. I think that was the one that stood out. And I remember tasting that the other day and looking for smoke and not really getting it. And it was on the finish, certainly in the empty glass. When I came back to the empty glass and I smelled the empty glass, it was very smoky in the glass. Um, I actually used the Glen Scotia in the end for that. Glen Scotia, you thought? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you can see because it's got that kind of. It's got. It's again. It fits with that kind of funkiness. Interesting. What Stefan mentioned about the the producers' notes became the most difficult to match up, and that's frustrating. I think I I, I have to. The producers' notes, the Ben Romac notes, were very good because they were very brief, uh, very straight to the point. Um, intense, richly complex with sherry kicks. Yes, we picked out sherry. We were thinking about that stewed fruits, beeswax, polish, vanilla pods, delic delicate smoke, yes. Interestingly, though, on that Blair Athol, everybody thought this, and I have thought this in the past. I thought this, this was wine cask. I thought it was maybe sherry cask. This is a, this is recharred. This is a recharred um, hogshead. It's a recharred hoggy. Now, what, what the previous incumbent was, we don't know. But if it's recharged, right, it's kind of 
but it is. It's rich and whiny and sherry like. I think. Is there anything to the fact that um, the official bottling and its number is for the Ben Romick and the official bottling for Bim Bimber? Yep. They're nice and brief and straight to the point. Whereas, and I do love both those independent bottlers, that they're almost overcompensating to try and prove that their whiskey is worth buying, that you have all these things. And, and you know, the orchard fruit, spit, roasted pound, all, all this stuff, and, and it's, it's lovely writing, but it's like they're trying to justify why you should lift their bottle off the shelf where the, the Bimber and the Ben Romick are just a little bit more straight to the point. Well, actually, if you look at the producer's notes, the ones that are straight to the point actually are, are the Cadenheads. Oh, are they? Am I wrong? Am I got them wrong? Yeah, it's the Cadenheads yeah. and, the, and the Ben Romack. The Bimber is actually quite verbose. If you look at the Bimber one, that's the one that talks about um, characterful note of charred oak. Um, so yeah, Bimber just went for it on their notes as well. Vim, Vim, Bimber were waxing lyrical. Um, and obviously the green one was uh, SMWS. Now we are well accustomed to all the whimsy coming from uh, coming out of the vaults, right? Uh, that's what the SMWS is famous for. But I think the most important thing there is that not to kind of berate them for it. It's fun and it's it's leading people and it's making people think about whiskey and it's having a bit of fun with the tasting notes and that's all very very well. But in an environment where so many people are looking for hooks when they come into whiskey. They're looking for the bold, isolated flavours that can draw them in and make them feel that they can taste something more than just alcohol and whiskey. So they're looking for maybe sherry. They're maybe looking for peat smoke. They're maybe looking for malt and cereal. These clear hooks that they make them feel they can taste something different. Then I think I have to applaud maybe the more succinct notes from Caden Heads, mm. from Romac. Things that dial in a wee bit tighter, um, things that are maybe a wee bit easier and more welcoming. And then for people that want to kind of go a bit further, join the SMWS, pay a membership, that kind of thing, they're in the environment. They're they're already deep and they're so they're ready for this whimsy and they know that it's that it's a real thing. They know that it can be fun, all of that stuff. Excellent stuff. Frank Rochford is saying favourites in order, yellow, red. Blue, green. So Bimber was second for him. He preferred the Ben Romack out of the two. The Deanston third and uh, the green one, the Blair Athol last. Um, fantastic stuff. Jean de la Cuisine is saying, by what you're describing, I think I need to seek out some Ben Romack. Absolutely. I would go for cast strength Ben Romack. Honestly, Jean de la John, knowing where you are in your whiskey journey as well, I would say, yeah, cast strength Ben Romack. Listen, I've got. Ben Romack 10 and 15 on hand. Ben Romack 15 was just in the last recycled review. It's a favourite of mine as well. It's not expensive, but 43%. Gordon McPhail is the point I made in the recycled review. Should know a wee bit better, especially the traditional approach that they're following there. I I, I do think they chill filter as well, although I'm not convinced they, that, that that's true. Um, it would be nice if it was at a higher ABV and we could have a bit more natural presentation from such a traditionally made malt whiskey. That's the only thing I would say about Ben Romack. But nothing to detract from the malt experience. I think it's wonderful. Was that stressful at all? No. <laughs> I, I found it a wee bit stressful. I think I would have preferred to be in your shoes tonight because keeping track <laughs> and trying to work out, you know, what was... Um, I mean, it was easy to do the scores because of the... I gave you four as a starty because I literally told you what my notes were. That was a wee mistake on my part. But you started off with four out of four at the start. Um, <laughs> I think um, maybe, I don't know, you would have to decide for yourselves whether you think that you would have matched up on my scores. I, I think you would have. Ian, I have to say, I'll show you offline. If you stay for a debrief after we finish tonight, I'll show you it's just lit up. I've been using this highlighter pen to mark the scores, and it's just literally you. You only miss match three all night and one, and it was the producer's notes that threw you. I, I, as I was saying it with Stefan, one hundred percent. A lucky, a lucky night for Ian Petrie, I think. It was our notes, your notes, and the independent ones all make sense. The producers' ones were, the, were just off in different directions. The, yeah, yeah, but well, I, I think the producers. So yeah, the producers they have, could come from a completely different angle. So us, the independent reviewers, Roy, we just drink the whiskey, you know, and we want to describe it as well as possible. The producers or the bottlers need to sell it. So 
So, so they and I think certainly I think want to overplay or want to put keywords in that they know sell or attract people to want to try it, and we don't positive. have that. Yeah. And and that plays out because one of my favorite new whiskies is that Bimba. I love that Bimba. And you could see because I, I'm clearly coming at an angle that I want this to be a positive. I'm I'm not unbiased when I wrote those tasting notes. And you could see that I've oversold that whiskey to you. And you've <laughs> assessed it completely unbiased and said, Roy, you're talking pish. It's not nearly what I got from this. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. You, you would be quite happy to sit and enjoy a bottle of that with me, right? It's not, it's very, very good whiskey. I like that. But you can see I was probably coming at that. It's a lesson for us all uh, from a quite a biased um, standpoint. And that's something that's in the recycled reviews. When I give something a score, I link other people's reviews. And sometimes the people that I've linked in those reviews disagree fully with me. Either they love something that I've disliked or vice versa, because it's foolish to choose or spend money, especially if you don't have the ability to try before you buy. Like in so many countries, you simply don't. Um, it's foolish to go on one man's opinion, I think. It's nice to do your research if you're spending 50, 60, 100 quid on bottles of whiskey, right? So, listen, guys, that was wonderful. <laughs> Super interesting, great fun, and great participation from all of you. Uh, let's see what the folk in the chat think. Um, Stefan Novak is saying, SMWS notes are printed on the label of the bottle, are far more accurate and more straight to the point. Yeah, because they're... Restricted by real estate there, aren't they, Ste Stefan? But you can only read those uh, when, when you've bought the bottle. Aye, you, the, the more kind of uh, whim uh, whimsical ones are in the, the outturn uh, releases and on the website. Chris Beaton is in. Hello, Chris. Alistair McPhail is saying, Gordon McPhail sent me a... <laughs> Gordon McPhail sent me a lot of Ben Romack for a do I was hosting. My surname was a clear hook. I was grateful because there were some left over. Good for you, Alistair. Hey, listen, if you've got, um, if McPhail's your name, it's good if you can leverage that once in a while, isn't it? Whiskey Mystery Phil is in saying, I lost track of which whiskies were favourites. Is there a final order? Yes, there is. Uh, I think the clear favourite tonight, um, well, just by what we're discussing, um, the favourite at the start of the night, interestingly, from Julie, was the SMWS, Blair Athol. Uh, Stefan also chose that, but I think there was some ambivalence from Stefan, whereas Ian, uh, he chose as his favourite the one that he thought was the Ben Romick that was the Ben Romick. Um, that's the favourite. Um, I think as we talked through the night, I think the one that bobbed to the surface for me was the Deanston, the one that we started to enjoy a wee bit more, that creaminess, that texture. And, and obviously, for me, the Deanston is a very pure, clean thing. It's very much my stick. That's the whiskey I love just now. A refill cask. 10, 12, 15 years, leave it for some time. The cask isn't dominant. The spirits had a chance to mellow. You can get that really clean spirit uh, thing. That's my style of whiskey, and the Deanston seems to bring that for me. Um, loved reading Serge's notes on that. So there you go. If you're going to get whimsical, get whimsical with Serge Valentin. That's, that's what I would say. Uh, somebody's bought me a dram. It looks like Mark Gones has bought me a dram. Mark, I hope I've not missed that, my friend. Uh, I'm sure I haven't. He's saying, first fee pub. Uh, oh no, it's Whiskey 101. Thank you. First VPUB is an official Barfly and patron, and what a super night. Great content as always, and thank you so much for the Whiskey Club members for such a fun night. I'll echo that, uh, Whiskey 101. Now I remember your name. It'll come to me in a wee minute, but thank you so much for your drama. I'm going to raise this wee glass of Deanston to say thank you to my uh, three fellow Whiskey Club members for your super uh, sportsmanship and your bravery. Thank you so much. Cheers. Thank you, Val. Stay a while, won't you? There's always a quiz at the end. I'm going to chat to these guys. Um, I don't know. Look at the time, 20 past. I don't know if we've got time for us at a space side tonight. We'll go on the chat. If we get bullied from the chat, we'll try it. Um, we're not going to play individually. We'd play as a group, the three of you against me. <laughs> uh, so we could do that quite quickly. Simon Ray saying fascinating stuff. Thank you all. Of course, there's a quiz at the end tonight. Anybody that wants to stay for the quiz, for those of you that don't enjoy the quiz, you can you can take your leave. I know it's getting late. It's already beyond midnight over most of Europe. Thank you all for hanging out with us.
Whiskey Throttle Daniel saying, good times, Roy. Time to drive home. You are working, Daniel. I thought you would be. Thanks to you and your quest for the entertainment. We'll listen at work. Thank you so much, Daniel. Graham Fraser is saying, can you put the results in the YouTube notes, please, Roy? I will. I will try and do my housekeeping and they put the results up there. I'll check with these guys first if they want the scores shared. I have to say, they're really quite good scores. I don't see why not. Hell, Hell's Wid is saying, thank you, Alan McLaughlin is saying, I go for a quick game. You guys know what is it a space side is, right? It's 10 questions, yes or no. I've got to try and guess what the core range is. Ian, I think we'd agreed that you were going to grab a core range bottle. You've got it there. You've got it on hand. I did see the oh, cap. Yeah. Open it this, 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 uh, I saw a black cap. I'll be bearing that in mind. That might help me a wee bit. Um, and then if you want to play the three of you guessing what I have, we can do that quickly. What do you say? Let's go for yep. it, right? Just you going for first? Sake. Or are we yeah. going first? I'll, I'll, yes. I'll ask you first, okay? So this is a wee countdown here. I've got 10 questions. You can only answer yes or no. Firstly, Ian, I have to ask you, it's a core single malt that's widely available to everyone. Yes. It is core range. Okay. Good luck to me. Is it a space side, Ian? No. Is it a Highland? Yes. Um, is it Northern Highlands? Let's say, is it north of uh, Dulwini? Yes. Is it one of the big four, as in Diageo, Edrington, Grants, or uh, Pernod Ricard? No. Okay. Is it an island? No. Okay, we're on the mainland. Okay. Does it have an age statement? Yes. Is it north? I don't know how this helps me. Is it north of Inverness? Yes. So we're down to, we don't have Tomatin anymore in the running. We're down to Dalmore, Old Pulteney, maybe Wolfburn. Damn. Is it Old Pulteney? Don't, no, no, don't show me yet. Yes. I, I need to guess the expression. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Okay, so. <laughs> is, is, is either going to be, okay. Uh, you've, I, I did see it. I don't know what the age is. I, it was just on the wee thumbnail there. It didn't look like a 12. Um, is, uh, is it the, it looked like the old packaging. Is it old Pulteney 17? No. Is it old Pulteney 12? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I sneaked it at the last minute. I sneaked it at the last minute. Okay. Wow. I was close to failing there. I was definitely close. So you get you get the general idea, guys. So what we're going to do in the opposite way around is the three of you are going to be working as a wee team to try and guess the, the official bottling that I have on hand here. Exact same as what we've just played. Uh, I'll bring the wee countdown in again. Um, I've actually got two here. But I've been enjoying this one tonight, so I'm going to pop this just on the table. It's the only whiskey bottle on the table. It's just, just out of shot. Good luck, all three of you playing together. I can only answer yes or no. I'll do the best I can. Ask away, please. So we start Is that a space side? <laughs> you, you don't need to, but uh, go right ahead. I can tell you it's not a space side. Uh, I'll, I'll run up and down the line, okay? So there's nine questions left. I'll start with Ian. Does it have an age statement? Yes. Stefan. Why did it go down when, when you got a yes? I thought you when a yes, it's okay. You've got you 10 questions. I thought it goes down when you get a no. Stefan's no, first no. B-pub and he wants to change the rules. <laughs> <laughs> you get 10 questions, so we've had two. 
I thought, ah, sorry, I thought you you yeah. you you don't the number doesn't go down if you have a yes. Yeah. Ah, well, that's it's, it's just keeping count, buddy. <laughs> uh, so it's not a space side, and it does have an age statement. That's as far as we've got so far. Is it well? The chat are can, playing as well. So then, then can I can I pass this question to Julie because I thought of different rules. So I thought, and so I can't just ask simple questions that have a yes anyway. So it doesn't. The number doesn't go down. I, I that's the, that's the idea scenario. Your fellow German uh, doc it's over in Germany, not he likes what he likes to do is find questions that halves the remaining quantity. <laughs> half, try and half it each time. Yeah. So, um, Julie, if you've got, a, go ahead. Is it a Campbelltown? No. That's that was yeah. your sniping. Uh, go yes, ahead, Ian. Yeah. Is it one of the big four? No, it's not. So the one, the big four is Edrington, Pernod Ricard, Diageo, um, and Grants. It's not one of those guys. Um, yeah. Then it, is it a Highland? Yes, it is. Julie, we have a, a Highland with an age statement. It's not one of the big four. Um, is it on an island? Nope. Mainland Highlander. Is it north of Dalhoney? <laughs> No, but by okay, by that much. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to give you give you all a wee hand here. It's the reason that I'm struggling about how north it is is it's because of where it is in latitude. But I believe, yeah, it's it's south. It's south of Dalwhinnie. Um. My joke. I don't even like. I, I know you need to be good at geography if you start if, if you go in this direction. Absolutely. <laughs> is it my question or it's Stefan's? Isn't it? It's Stephen. mine, but I don't have. A, I don't know what you can ask play as a team. You can play as a team. Oh, I'm gonna. Yeah, I've got a one for a stab in the dark at the end if we completely run out. But if it's a a smidge, I almost said uh, boy here um, below dull twenty. Does that not? across the way, bring it into kind of Glen Grant, Glen Cadham kind of ter uh, territory. The problem is that... Uh, Glen sorry, Grant not Glen Grant. Uh, um, Glen Cadham, isn't it? Because Cadham's just north of Dundee. You've I'm, got I'm that waiting for a here. question that I can answer yes or no. Of course, with. yeah. I was trying to confer with my team and they're looking at... Yeah, the go ahead. <laughs> hey, come on, Stefan. Think of a question. Is it an East Coaster? No. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Eastern Highlands, south of Dalwhinnie. It's... Um... Edge Damon. <sighs> there are... Uh, the... I don't want to say. Uh, do you think we're allowed no, to say... No, I... I... <laughs> the question. Uh, maybe a good question is... Well, I have an idea, but oh, does okay. it start with does it start with Glen? Yes. So now you have once that goes to zero, you still have a Hurley. You're familiar with the concept of a Hurley, Julie, the last chance, the your, your extra life. Um, I think it's so I think it's I, I want to ask a question. Go ahead, Ian. Go ahead. Ian. We can barely see him. We can barely hear him. He knows what it is, but we won't get to know. There he is. He's back. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's you. That's you. Did you ask a question when I was dying? Because my internet's rubbish, yeah? No, no, no. Go ahead. We're waiting on you. I would just go with your question because I think. Is it Glenn Cattle? Yes. So now 
now you just have to guess which of the core range from Glen Cadam. Someone want to pick a number? I am not familiar at all. I think they have a 10, which is the cheapest. I'm going with a 10. Yep. I'll go with a 10. Well ten. done. <laughs> 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 well done, well done, <laughs> fantastic! Really. I'm ludicrously excited. You got there in the end. I think actually that was the same as me on the final one. You managed to yeah. to get the expression. Well done. That was a wee game of is it a space side? Listen, are you guys staying for the quiz? Yes. Yes, please. Okay, I'll pull you back in for the quiz in a few minutes. Going to chat to these guys uh, in the lounge. Um, there's no point in turning up live if you, if you don't get a chance to uh, to speak to them. And I'll call you in for the quiz at the end. Unless uh, it probably feels like you've been through an exam or something tonight. <laughs> Apologise if that's what it feels like. It wasn't intentional. I'll speak to you in a wee minute. Thank you. Well done, guys. You've all won yourself one of these wee sniper coins. Uh, anybody that's in the chat that um, that guessed Glen Cadam 10 or Old Pontley 12 tonight has also, uh, it, sorry, the first folk that would have won yourself one of these wee sniper glass toppers. You can't buy these. You can't. Uh, the only way you can get these is to snipe them. You can literally play live. You can play, come on and play the game live with me, or you can join in uh, from the chat. Wonderful stuff. Let's see if we know. Uh, Doc was guessing Glen Cadam 21. Could have been, but it was a 10. Oh, lots of people did guess Glen Cadam 10. Well done. Hopefully, the moderators have managed to pick out who, which of you managed to work out uh, who got that. Um, Chris, the sniper king is in. It was I, I was first with Old Pontley Twelve. You cannot be. Uh, Chris Mir has managed to win six or seven. I think he's on seven sniper coins now. He's won enough to cover a whole flight and more. Well done, Chris Mir. He said, "Please send it out to Glenn Irwin, Irwin Murray." Fantastic. Thank you so much. That's exactly what I'll do. Um, that's nice of you to donate it to our Glenn. Uh, Glenn, I'm glad if you're in here tonight. Um, uh, there was an email when I was uh, setting up the new website. I lost my email. Everybody knows about that, I think. And I lost a bunch of emails. Uh, one of the emails was from you, my friend. I really hope you can resend that again um, because there was a draft attached to that. I was replying to you. If you could send me that email, I would really appreciate it. I think you know the email. I mean, um, Glenn, I hope you're in tonight. Thank you. Alan McLaughlin is saying, Chris Amir, Che France. Uh, Chris Mir, Jelchich, and Che Francis again. Che's won before. Well done, Che. Graham Fraser is saying, I feel as stressed as the guests tonight. That's not the intention, Graham. I do apologise. I knew it was going to be a risky thing tonight. I knew it was going to be a wee bit different. Rob Halford is saying, hey, Roy, great VPUB tonight. Got my challenge coin today. Been uh, enjoying Lechick 10 from your recycling reviews. Thank you, Rob. I hope you're enjoying the whiskey and the coin. Uh, uh, Akshay is saying, tell Ian that his smile is infectious. Oh, there you go, Ian. Um, you have uh, an admirer in the chat with an infectious smile. Uh, he's an infectious guy to be around as well, actually. Uh, Cressamir is saying, I'll send uh, you Glenn's email. Um, well, I have his email address, but it was actually the email that he'd sent to me. If it's still in his outbox, I'd like him to resend it again. Steve is saying, I just got my new acrylic toppers today. Steve, you're in the States. That's great that they're landing in the States. I'm getting a lot of messages in from the States saying, where are they? It seems to be taking a wee bit longer to get to their destination right now. Steve, I'm glad you got them. That was probably a week or two I sent them. I'm not sure. Glad that they're landing. Tristan History is here. Just in from work, lovely to uh, have these back on Thursday evenings. Thank you. It's nice to have you back in as well, Tristan. And uh, Bram Butterham is in saying thanks for another great VPUB. Bram, I hope you stay for a wee bit of a quiz at the end. As you know, as everybody knows, it stays for the quiz. It's multiple choice. It's meant to be a wee bit of fun. Most of the questions are pretty straightforward. And with a one in three chance, even chimps score 33%. But some questions that are in there are a wee bit ass hatty. They are designed to make folk think, whether it's about scale, concepts, whatever it might be. There's always a banana skin or an ass hat in there as well. I welcome you all to stay for a quick quiz at the end because I'm running late tonight. But that's because I was having fun hanging out with my pals here. Uh, I'll bring them back in so that they can play along with the quiz and participate with us. Ian, you give me a thumbs up if your tech is OK. I'll bring in Julie because she's solid and been looking great all night. And Stefan has been looking super dignified and comfortable all night. I wouldn't have expected anything else. And Ian is currently in portrait, but that's fine. Uh, I don't mind as long as we can see and hear you. And, it will uh, change. The quiz is very straightforward. 
Um, you're only you can, you're keeping. There's no prizes. You're just playing against yourself, I guess, and for kudos. Pass mark is five out of ten, and uh, we'll see um, see how the lounge, see how the bar flies get on tonight. Good luck, guys. Thanks for staying till the end. Question one: Which skull? You can't shout this out. I know you want to shout it out. You, you, there's lots of these that you're just going to know. But which Scotch single malt is made by the sea? <laughs> Thank you, Stefan. Which is made by the sea? Is it A, Old Pulteney, B, Bunahaven, C, Talisker? I've picked three kind of coastal maritime themed brands on purpose. Stefan knows what it is. He was miming it. Sorry. Sorry, Whiskey sorry. Jason is in, looking after me in the quiz tonight. Thanks, Jason. That might help me discern. Oh, this is splitting people more than I imagined. I oh, know it's not. No, it's not. All the answers are coming in now. Julie, do you feel confident about this one? Just give me a nod or a shake of the head. You feel confident? And Ian, of course you do. Yeah. Of course, we are talking about C. Talisker is made by the C. Uh, Old Pulteney and Bunahaven both draw heavily on maritime uh, themes for the branding, of course, as well. But Talisker is made by the sea. Question two, spot the false statement. Bit of a banana skin, bit of an ASAC question here, but it's cool nonetheless. And I'm going to say thanks to Tim at Donner Pass Whiskey for pointing this one out to me from the Recycled Review. Should have made a point on this at the time. But there's a false statement in the following options. For Glendronic 12, 43% ABV, the official bottling A. It's X Oloroso and PX matured. B, it's chill filtered. C, it's natural colour. One of those is false and the other two are true statements. I'm trying to pick the false one. Less confident, Stefan, or feeling good about this one? I'm looking for the emojis in the chat. Uh, people are going to start throwing bananas in the chat and suggesting this could be a banana skin. Nope, it's a very knowledgeable lounge that we have. Ian, what do you think? Is it not C? That they could have added a dot of colour. Stefan, what do you think? I would have said C as well, yeah. But not and Julie, what do you think? I would say B. Julie saves face. Absolutely right. Despite it being 43% ABV, um, it's a non-chill filter. And it says on the label, it also says natural colour on there as well. Um, and it also says that it is PX and dollar also matured. It's very interesting. Tim at Donald Pass Whiskey pointed out the only other whiskies he could call to mind that are less than 46 or 45.7, whatever the cutoff is, um, ABV and uh, non-chill filtered as well were the, the great King Street blends from Compass Box. Be interesting though, that's why I was thinking about the Bin Romax tonight, especially the 15 year old. It could be that that may be non-chill filtered as well. Question three, in the past, which of these single malts have featured a cork made with solid granite? A, Elsa Bay, B, Glendronic Grandeur, or C, Balveni, 50 year old. In this packaging, uh, they put a cork in the top of this bottle. It was heavy. If you threw it, it would definitely hurt. Um, and it was made of um, solid granite. Let's say the core of the cork, maybe not the entire cork. There was genuinely cork in there as well. Do you, do you guys know this one? Yeah. Paul McDonough well, was the one who recommended uh, this to me, that I try this whiskey, and I was very glad to follow him. The lounge has uh, nailed this. They know exactly what it is. Uh, Julie, tell us what it is. Ilsa Bay. Ilsa Bay. Do you know the story behind it? It's uh, okay, yeah. It's it's the blue granite from Ilsa. Ilsa. What's it called? Ilsa. Ilsa Craig. Ilsa Craig, of course. So they take the. This is the curling stone granite, isn't it? Mm. And that's what they did. I think they've since changed. It was probably an expensive exercise for. Yeah, I think the first two ladies had it, and I think they, they did away with that because it was pretty spendy for for the price of the bottle. It was, Aye, it was a sub fifty pounds non statement yeah. peated whiskey. Yeah. Interesting thing about that expression as well is that it also had, as well as fennels parts per million for smoke, 
had sweetness parts per millions as a specification on the label. Now, I don't know if they've kept with that, but uh, that was an interesting thing as well. Absolutely right, Julie Elsa B. If you answered A, give yourself a point. Question four, Montfort is an expression using 100% unmalted barley from which form, excuse my spelling, from which Canadian distillery? 100% unmalted barley. This is bizarre. Stillwater's Distillery, Shelter Point Distillery, Lucky Bastard Distillers. You heard of Lucky Bastard Distillers? No. Nope. I've only heard of Lucky Bastard Distillers through doing the quiz. I used them in a previous question. <laughs> Not tried anything from them. I have to say I haven't tried this whiskey, but I would be very keen to. Wonderful name for a distillery. Absolutely. Lucky Bastard. Yeah. <laughs> Did you mention them earlier tonight, Roy? I'm sorry? Did you mention Lucky Bastard Distillers earlier on tonight? Uh, I might have been calling one of you guys a Lucky Bastard. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I did. It certainly wasn't intentional. It's coincidence then that I've, I've heard it earlier on today. You mentioned a, a, a whiskey festival that had the word bastard in it. Ah, the Bastards Ball, yes, in Texas. Oh, um, so the, 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 the community that is grown around the Whiskey Tribe, which is one of the biggest uh, whiskey channels between them and the Vault, the sister channel, they've got over half a million subscribers now, but they have an event in Texas every year. It's the Bastards Ball. Um, they call their community the Magnificent Bastards. It's, <laughs> it's great fun. It's a great community. And uh, unfortunately, it's, it has to be virtual this year. But anyway, uh, the chat are all saying, uh, the majority, let's say, are guessing that it's B Shelter Point, and they're absolutely right. I don't know if you guys would have guessed that as well. Stab in the dark for you all. But what I want to know about this is 100% unmalted. I thought they had to have at least a small amount of malted barley in there to get the enzyme process kick-started. So maybe they're doing that in a different way, but I did check up the stats on it. And it is 100% unmalted barley. Very interested to try it. Here's a, the picture image tonight. Uh, it's obviously a picture of a distillery with the name uh, masked out. And I'm just asking you, are we looking at A, Penderin or Penderin in Wales, B, Cotswolds in England, or C, Echlinville in Northern Ireland? I apologise if I'm pronouncing Echlinville wrong. Stevie is saying likely able to add an enzyme extract. Yeah. Jimmy Legg is saying, that's my country home, Aquafiti. He's talking about Shelter Point. Jimmy Legg is over in Canada, of course. Jimmy Legg is saying, yeah, but they use malted barley as well, so that'll get the sugar to begin with. Yeah, that's the normal practice. Uh, yeah. Do you guys know what we're looking at here? Do you recognize this wee place? No, I really don't. Good it's guess. my summer home. Your summer home. <laughs> it looks like a nice wee summer home to have, though, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Is it Pendleton? Uh, no. Any other guesses, Julie? You're 50 50 now. Cotswolds. Spot on. Looks, We're looking looks at Cotswolds. I think the thing that gives that away is that, and I think you would have to live down there. If Lee J. Brown's in tonight, he's in Chippenham. It's not far away from Cotswolds. I used to live down there a wee bit. And it, that kind of architecture with the small stone, the Cotswolds stone there. Um, Cotswolds Distillery. I have to say, I quite like the Cotswolds core expression as well for a young whiskey. It's good and not a bad price too. Six, yeah. which of these is a genuine long row red release? This is a bit of a banana skin Two of these are completely invented. One of them is genuine, an 11 year of fresh port, 13 year old Australian Shiraz, 13 year old Pinot Noir. The reason I picked this one up tonight is that the last recycled review sparked lots of chat and discussion and direct messaging about uh, Long Row Reds. I reviewed a uh, Long Row Red. I threw away a Long Row Red and reviewed it. I liked it a lot. And it was uh, quite uh, divisive because it was one of the Long Row Reds that a lot of folk didn't like so much. But I'm asking one of these is genuine. Fresh port, Australian she, eleven year old fresh port, thirteen year old Australian Shiraz, and thirteen year old Pinot Noir. This is really tough. I will take a full responsibility for this being a bit of an ass hat question. I guess I'm asking you guys to guess, unless you know this. I think Stefan knows. He has his little quiet. He's he's going. Mm, yes, I, I'm thinking. I he knows. He knows the answer. I don't. I don't. If we if we looked over his left shoulder, I, I did yeah. spot a significant <laughs> Springbank collection going on here. 
Oh, no, we just, we only see a wee bit oh, of it. I, if you left I, it a bit higher. It's the only expression I really don't like. It's the various dishes of, of Longro. So, not a big fan. Because of the wine and, thing. Uh, do you remember well, Greg? Greg Benson? Greg Benson from the Whiskey Club. It was, I was talking to him one night about really not enjoying wine finishing or wine casks and whiskey and struggling with a lot of them. And it was him, he brought me... Uh, it was at the Bon Accord. It was a 13-year-old Malbec. And I loved it. And it kind of helped me enjoy wine finishing and things a lot. 99% of the chat got it right, Chris Amir is saying. I'll put you out your misery. Have a guess at it, Stefan, Springbank guy. Uh, I've already failed at everything else. So which one is a genuine one? Uh, then let's go for the uh, Pinot Noir. Fresh Port 2014. There are Pinot Noir releases, but they're younger. Uh, Australian uh, Shiraz is also an 11 year old as well, but the Fresh Port. Bizarrely, the reason I put that in there is I started to research after the recycled reviews, uh, Long Row Red releases, and I had completely missed the fact that there was a port release ever. So there is a genuine port release out there. Question seven Which of these distilleries did not see a Game of Thrones release? Did anybody buy the Game of Thrones releases? Did you? I know I, I brought along a couple to the club. Um, I was trying to find the pick of the bunch. I think the Lag Villain and the Klein Leash and things. Klein Leash was without, for, for me, was the, the star of the show. Klein Leash and Lag Villain. He helped it. Very spirity as well. Um, yeah. I enjoyed the Lag Villain, but it was an easy to drink. It was an mm. easily accessible Lag Villain. Um, but which one of these? Did not see a release. A. Glenn Dullin, B. Oban, or C. Craig and Moore. One of those three distilleries didn't see any Game of Thrones action. They're knowledgeable folk in the chat. They really are. It's quite amazing how well they do at these quizzes. <laughs> you want to? Do you want to have a guess, Julie? I should know this because we've got the most sitting in stock for the club. Um. <laughs> <coughs> I know, and that's uh, I was kind of heading with Glenn Dullin. Glenn Dullin, yeah. Stefan is shaking his head. Give us no. a guess, Stefan. Yeah, it's a, there is a Glenn Dullin. It's one of the three or four forty percent ones. So oh, is even, that, not just by name. Is it there's Craig no Craig Moore? And Moore. Mm. Yeah. Stefan, Stefan saves your bacon, absolutely. <laughs> Um, the reason that you're not spotting right. Glendalen, Julie, is it's branded as the singleton of Glendalen. Oh, it, right? it is oh, out there at 40%. But Craig and Moore, which annoyingly under the classic malts is out there at 40% as well, mm -hmm. is a shame. But uh, Craig and Moore didn't see any Game of Thrones action. Question eight. Miyagikyo Distillery in Japan is under the same ownership as A. Hakushu, B. Yoichi, or C. Okayama. Mia Gikyo is owned by the same parent company as A, Hakushu, B, Yoichi, or C, Okayama. Greg's Whiskey Guide thinks this one is tricky, or maybe he's talking about the last one. Um, Whiskey Straight Al is admitting he said C, but he knew he was wrong. And John Della Cuisine is saying he always forgets about the singletons. Aye, we do. We forget about Glendullen. Yeah. Uh, we forget about Dufton, Glenord. Um, yeah. Ah, uh, Desi worked it out. Mm, no, that's a singleton change to C. Yeah, you managed to save yourself a point as well there. Guys, do you know who Mia Gikyo is owned alongside? Would you be guessing Thank here? You. Yeah, Julie does. Go ahead, Julie. It's Yoichi. Yoichi, absolutely. Nika. It sure is. Nika. Um, the other two there, Hukushu is uh, Beam Suntory, isn't it? Alongside mm -hmm. Yamazaki. Yeah. Trying to remember that who owns Okayama. One of the mm -hmm. Shuzos. I don't remember which one. Now, need to work on my memory. So if you answer B, give yourself a point. Question nine. Bomor is traditionally, traditionally lighter on peat fennels than some other of the Isle expressions, as Stefan noted tonight. To what spec is their malt peated? To give you a, a guide, our beg is typically 50, 55 ppm, I think. But let's talk about Bomor. Is it A, 40 fennels ppm? B, 25 to 30 or C, 15 to 20. But more. 
I am not a huge Beaumont fan, Stefan. I'm on re record saying sometimes, oftentimes, more often than not, I struggle with Beaumont. So it was interesting yeah. that you were drawn to Beaumont and the Ben Romack. Yes, but not because I particularly liked it. or, or, or Although there, I think there, the Beaumonts that have been recently, well, since 2000 or so, the, most of them are uh, quite good. But I, st I think still recognizable Beaumont. It's a bit different. There's always this... this uh, slightly perfumey thing going with well, there is there is the FFP era, yeah. Um, FWP, FWP, sorry, the FWP, sorry, my apologies, FWP, um, yeah, in that era, but that was, and I uh, think it just, it just amplified a lot of those notes that era, didn't yeah. it? I mean, it's always there, but something that they did during that time made it made it so much more prominent, powdering um, the powdering the peak. It's coming back to how it used to be now. Yeah, it's getting better, especially on indies, Julie. Independent bottlings of Bamor at cast strength and things can be cracking. I yeah. think the official bottlings suffer horrifically from colour, from really low ABV bottling. Um, yeah, it's a shame. One of the legendary distilleries out there, I don't think it's best represented by their owners right now. Um, what would you guess on the fennel content, though? Because the, 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 the lounge are strongly leaning towards B. B, B. I would have said B. I said B, too. They're a knowledgeable bunch, as I've said before. Absolutely. 25 to 30 fennels in Bamor. I actually thought it was lighter. I thought they were down at 15. Question 10, last question. Oh, Jesus. Okay, I admit, this is an asset question. As of today, how many different bottles have been reviewed in the Recycled Review series? About the same as the number of Scotch malt distilleries, a good bit more than the number of Scotch malt distilleries, or a good bit less than the number of Scotch malt distilleries. When I do ask that questions, I don't do it by half. <laughs> Either. Um, and if you guys, if you watch, I don't know if, if you watch the recycled reviews, I know you pick them up from time to time, uh, but it might help if you know the number. <laughs> look at the look at the chat; mm -hmm. it's just full of ass hat emojis. Can I, can I ask a quick question? Um, yeah. The last one of your um, recycle reviews, you put. I'm not judging. You put in quite a lot of bottles. Is that an average number of bottles you put in, or is it very? Fifteen. A recycled review is fifteen bottles. Right, so okay. what varies is the amount of time it takes me to get to fifteen empty bottles. <laughs> So to give you an idea, uh, during lockdown, um, I was probably getting through a, a bit more whiskey on my own, but not a lot of people were coming to the house, of course, for me to share with it, whiskey with them. So it took me longer to get through. The last recycled review went out at the end of January. It's quite a long time, but I'm already building a wee basket through there. I think the next one will be much, much quicker. And, it, and I noticed that over lockdown, it was really good stuff. There wasn't any crap getting thrown out <laughs> in the last recycled review. So I was obviously picking stuff to indulge me, which was... Tended to be good stuff. In that case, I reckon it's it's B. I you think it's B? B. A good bit more than the number of Scotch malt distilleries. Well, there's probably somewhere in the order of 140 malt distilleries in Scotland now, something of that order. Um, recycled reviews, 15 bottles, 11 reviews, so we're at 165, but actually we're over 170 bottles. So you're spot on. Thank you so much. A good bit more than the number of Scotch malt distilleries. I don't know what point I was trying to make from that question, other than the fact that I don't do a lot of recycled reviews, but if you download the recycled review spreadsheet, you can carry it around on your phone. It lists everything I've ever reviewed in there. There's a link right next to it. If you tap that link, it doesn't take you to the video. It takes you to the point in the video that I speak about that specific whiskey. Mm -hmm. That will then let you link to lots of other reviewers as well so that you're not just making a... Uh, you're not just taking my opinion. I think that's maybe the point I was trying to make from that question. Let's see. Nine out of ten from Graham Fraser. Fantastic. That is a tremendous score, Graham. Wonderful stuff, Sid Martin on 8 out of 10. Sid, you always do really well. Greg's Whiskey Guide, 8 out of 10 tonight. Superb. Whiskey Jason, again, great, 8 out of 10. 7 out of 9 for uh, Steve A. I'm looking for the 10 out of 10s, any. Uh, Jason on 6. Lassie Hort Otsman on 8. 8 for Stu Baby. 7 out of 10 for Mark and Thomas. Any 10s? Falsgraf Frank on 9 out of 10. Superb. Um, Peter Box on 9. Tristan History on 8. I can't see anybody on a 10 out of 10 tonight, but Orange Will Rule, Hell's Wed on Lindberg, okay. got 10 out of 10. Sorry, who did? Johan Lindberg. Johan got a 10 out of 10 tonight. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking for it. 
Johan, congratulations, my friend. Well done on a 10 out of 10. I know you guys probably weren't keeping score, but I think I think you covered yourselves at the last map, no problem. You managed yeah. to go over the end. Listen, guys, stay until the end uh, so I can raise a wee glass with you just to say thanks and a wee bit of a debrief afterwards. Thank you mm -hmm. so, so much for hanging out with me tonight. I know you probably feel like you've been through the ringer a wee bit. <laughs> Um, but there's been lots of challenges and things. Uh, I hope it's been a wee bit of fun for you. Uh, I hope the Barflies can just shout out a quick uh, thanks to you all for taking time out of your Thursday night to hang out with us on the VPub. And it's given me a wee bit of a fix, honestly, because I'm missing you. I've been a, it's been a hell of a long time since I've been mm -hmm. along with Glasgow Whiskey to hang out with you and raise a glass in real life. So thank you all. Thanks to Ian for coming in. Thanks, Stefan and Julie. Thanks to you two as well for having a, a wee hangout tonight giving up your time. Thank you to you all. Thanks for having Slam. us. Thank you very much for having us. I've really, really, really enjoyed this tonight. <laughs> I'm glad you did enjoy it. So hang around till the end. And I'd like to, I'll have a wee sip with you afterwards as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. I'm very lucky. Um, the Glasgow Whiskey Club's got a great thing going. Um, lots of regulars, lots of kind of uh, stalwart committee, you know, rocks that kind of keep this thing going. They don't get paid for this. They don't. They just do it out of passion for people, passion for whiskey. Um, and I'm very lucky to have that near me in my town. It's a pain right now that we've kind of got to take these things virtual. Um, and it looks like that's going to continue for a little while. We've had more restrictions in Glasgow. We don't talk about that in the VPUB, of course. Um, but I'm lucky to have that local to me. If anybody local to you is trying to figure out a way to start a club, to get, a, to get together with local people, I will help you do that. Reach out to me and I'll shout out where you are. I'll try to find people near you. The Facebook group, Aquavitae Barflies, that's what that's all about so that we can take this virtual thing into the real world from time to time. Um, uh, Johan Lundberg, our 10 out of 10 guy tonight, has just joined Aquavitae Barflies. Thank you so much for your support, my friend. Cheers. Alistair McPhail has bought me a dram as well, saying Aquavitae, I wasn't going to stay the whole night. Thanks very much. Listen, I don't know how this has played out tonight. This was completely... Blue sky stuff, it was experimental things. It was a, just a new thing, something I'd been playing with for a while. I wanted to kind of debunk that idea that tasting notes are nonsense and encourage everybody to get their hands dirty with them. It's not made up. And if it is made up, then it's not going to get much traction. But if it, you're trying your very, very best, even if you don't get there, the people that you're drinking with can help you get there. Because as a group, you'll do much better out of it. And it's just a great way to try and articulate and share that that, that kind of shared experience that you're having in the glass. Whiskey's got so much to offer. There's so much going on in the glass. Why wouldn't we write it down? Why wouldn't we talk about it? Why wouldn't we vocalise? Why should we feel embarrassed if we genuinely taste cinnamon and barley sugars and boot polish and leather and cinnamon even in a plastic bag, sugar in a hot water bottle? Why shouldn't we say these things? Listen, I want to say thanks to everybody. I'll talk to you more uh, a week from tonight about what's happening on the 12th, which will be the Whiskey Tribes Bastards Ball. It's going to be a huge event running out of Texas. Uh, fantastic thing. I'm very, very glad to be involved. Uh, we'll be able to share more in the coming days. I'll get you up to speed a week from now. In the meantime, you know how to get a hold of me. And I look very much forward to hanging out with all of you again um, uh, a week from tonight. I'll raise a glass and I'll say, whiskey folk, you're all dearly loved. Thank you all for your support. Hoyt, you've just bought me a dram at the last minute. It was great fun tonight, Hoyt. I'm so glad you managed to catch it. You're all very, very dearly loved and I appreciate all your support. Slanchevar, see you in a week. Mm -hmm.